Our final best of three for today is going to be Brazil taking on EU. Fresh, welcome to the desk, Thank homie. You very much. How's it going? You've been watching the game? Yeah, I've been watching the game as I was enjoying that last game. Eminem going up against VP, the VP Paradox. Oh, they're so good, and then it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to point out that you cursed the entire VP Paradox situation. Yeah. Yeah, most I definitely. Did. All right, so let's focus in a little bit more on this Liquid versus Wolves matchup. Liquid having previously won 2 0 versus Dark Zero, and Wolves having lost 3 7 versus the side of Sonics. How do we think these two matchups are going to fare up? I think although we're seeing teams come in on sort of polar opposite ends of results, we're seeing Liquid coming off the back of a win, we're seeing Wolves coming off the back of a loss, we've kind of got to put it into the context of look who they played. All right, we got DZ, we played, we got DZ yeah. playing Liquid, like DZ played terribly last night and we sat here and we said that. Wolves on the flip side, they played Sonics, who for Harmony on the desk, they played the best. I think for Wolves, they've had a serious inconsistency issue through the last two or three games where, you know, they've got a 7-0 and then they got absolutely rinsed yeah. yesterday on a, on a bad map. I think for them, it's definitely going to be about finding the consistency today in their performance because, you know, best of threes, they can't be having these wild swings up well, and down. They've been at both ends, haven't they? They've yeah. been 7-0, they've 7-0'd somebody, yeah. and then on the flip side, they've had a maximum overtime. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no consistency in those results. How do we think they're going to do when it comes to the best of threes, though? Do you think a best of three is going to favour them with some more consistency? Consistency. It never used to, because mm -hmm. their map pool, you know, previously through 2022, it was a big criticism of them that the map pool didn't support it, but it has been one of the things that they've gone away and worked on mm -hmm. in terms of those best of threes. So, you know, I think they'll be feeling confident, you know, rather than being in best of ones. How about you? You agree on that? I think, <laughs> <laughs> they're in the right now. Huh? They certainly look up for it, don't they? Yeah, <laughs> they do. Think, with the work that we've seen this team put in, obviously, for anyone that hasn't watched EU or is new to Wolves, they used to have a player on there called Rise who was the IGL and since the start of the year, they've been rebuilding and they've been trying this new philosophy. So bringing in new maps is something that they can do now. Obviously, it's only been a couple of months, so there isn't the world of time here that we're dealing with, but that map pool does need to increase. Fortunately, they're going up against Liquid who, whilst they also do have a good map pool, there are a couple of maps that they don't really like too much. All right, well, on the topic of their map pool, take me through the veto, gentlemen. Yeah, so we're going to see Wolves pick straight into Oregon. Now, I think for Oregon, you know, in, in terms of the picks and the bans, both teams got rid of the maps that, you know, could be considered their perma bans that they yeah. don't really like. Um, Wolves have then picked into Oregon, which is a very comfortable map for themselves, but Liquid are also comfortable on it. So Liquid love it. When you've got a best of three, you're kind of like, do you go for your opponent's neck or do you get on a map that you're comfortable with? Yeah. We've seen various strategies. Wolves have gone for that map that they're comfortable with. I think the curious one for me, actually, is the clubhouse from Liquid, because it's a map that before this tournament was very low preference. It's one that they've been putting away and they've liked it at this tournament and they've picked it into Wolves, who, especially, especially inside of EU, were very well known for their executes on Clubhouse. And Clubhouse as a map really suits Wolves stylistically as well. It has a lot of the things that you're going to look toward for a team like Wolves to be able to pull off. You've got opportunity for players like Mowgli to get in there and be a little bit of a nuisance. You've got opportunity for more anchor play to come through because Wolves are still in that older meta of Siege. I think, you know, the, the last best of three that we saw, the map ban made a massive difference to the outcome of the game. I feel like this one, it was fairly scripted, but yeah. it was very even as well. I don't think it's going to make a material difference to the outcome of the game. It's going to be more about these teams turning up in the server mm -hmm. and putting right their wrongs that they've experienced yeah. over the last you know, couple of days. Well, I think it's about time not only for the folks at home to give me their predictions over in the chat, but also my dear casters, Intro and Pengu. Take it away. Thank you so very much. Nick's build on himself. I take, is it spilling with food? I guess it is. Show them. Can I show them? I'm gonna show you. I'm not sure I was gonna see show up on camera. I spilled chocolate all over myself. No mercy whatsoever. He's uh, sitting at the desk frantically trying to scrub it out. <laughs> and I, I messed just, up. I just, I, I messed I just up. want to expose I was you. snacking while watching the BP M&M &M game, and then I looked down and I was like, oh snap, that's bad. You didn't scrub hard enough. I didn't. Team Liquid versus Wolves, it's our last match of the Playoffs, technically, before we go to the phase three, which is the live stage, is that which is the finals, finals, but not the final day. Yeah, the way I looked at it was like play-ins, group stage, playoffs, but there's like different iterations of the system. Phase two, phase. I know three. that we invented every word. Yeah, and that sure. we can change what they mean because we invented them. The thing is that it, all uh, words, <laughs> all, word. all words are invented. <laughs> sure. What we know for a fact is that this is indeed phase two, and the winner, of course, will go to phase three, which will be that live event on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, of course. When you lose, you're out. 
from here on out. So both teams looking to stay in this. Liquid on Oregon will start on defense, Wolves on attack. And currently, the two teams are going through the operator band selection where nothing big, you know, big surprise coming out yet. Nurk, Ying and Kite so far. Nurk, of course, being one of the... I mean, it's not that commonly banned on Oregon, but in the grand scheme of things, map pool wise of course, Nurk, of course, is all banned as well. Solar Surazami. Malusi. I was gonna say. <laughs> Neither. Neither. That means both will be open. Now, Asami, of course, a big key operator on, I mean, let's be honest, every single map. Solus, most of those maps allows you to roam and play vertically. Oregon, not necessarily one of those maps where you're always going to be thinking, oh, Solus is open, great. Sure, some teams and sure some players might play this particular operator, but in a general meta game of it, it's not like a key operator. We often look at the Warden on defense, the Smoke, the Goyo, the Mai, currently right on the meta, is very commonly picked. And we see, literally, there you can see all five meta defenders in the first half of Liquid, right? As I said, Goyo, Womai, Smoke, Warden, and of course, with Asami being open, they also bring the Asami on top. Now, this map of Oregon will often come down to those five versus five or four versus four executes on the bomb side. This happens to pretty much every single side itself. It's how Oregon typically plays out. Wolves, they love playing this style of Siege in EUL, and they've been trying to do so as well here domestically, or internationally rather, at the Major, and they've had mixed success. I think what's important for Wolves right now is that Deadshot gets into the server, gets online, gets those kills early on, because when he goes 0 3 0 4, he just seems to never really wake up before the map is over, now, this is a best of three, so you gotta play for the long game, but also without the map that you're playing on right now. So there is, of course, a time for that shot to come back in a second or a third map when Wolves they get there. All right, well, obviously with this Malusi band coming in, you don't, you won't see those Banshees down below. That's one last thing for the Flores to take care of, and with it being a laundry supply execute for Wolves. And Flores is going to be an integral part every single time, likely situated over towards blue. That'd be my guess. Also got in very quickly, clearing out that main floor, Nick. Oh yeah, good pace so far. Note there is no mirror off from the side of Liquid in this round at least, so the bomb side can be attacked both from the front as well as the back side, but typically you don't really have much of a choice when you're attacking basement. Wolves, they brought out a ton of different utility. Now, they are playing Bach with the flashbangs, not the second carry can opener. That's because Bibu is on the Hibana. You have plenty of pillars to go through to get open up all those hatches and the walls if you would need any. Mowgli, of course, is star player for Wolves, arguably on the injury duos, always finding battles and very often winning them as well, putting Wolves into a favorable position. But so far, no action has really happened in this round. Well, that hard destruction going off on the security hatch that's going to force Team Liquid out of their position inside a freezer, except for Paul, who's got all the courage in the world. He'll hang on to that. Ex Kairos, no problem. We'll take all those hatches. Front hatch goes, meeting hatch goes, security hatch is gone. Goyo Canister already popped, and the Yana clone will sprint on in. Heavy emphasis from Team Liquid on blue as we come to expect on this bomb site. Still a good pace for Wolves. Mowgli looked all by his lonesome in this position over by blue. At some point, I suspect he will get someone to aid him. In the meantime, bait out as much utility as possible. There goes one gas canister. Shinka will force the smoke back inside of Elbow. A follow-up nade looked ready to go in. But they'll wait for now. Oh, Hoagley just sprints on in. Volt's going for the late reinforce. They managed to get away with it on the side of Team Liquid. That could be smart, but look at this. Volt's just trying to keep on aggressing forward. They got full pillar control and E-Box as well. There go those Kiba barriers and more damage being done to Team Liquid as both Nesk and Lagonas have That's taken a lot of damage. Resets from above will have hatch control over by Box. And Shink is the one who doesn't look in the right direction. No freezer control for Wolves. They notice Palu's in there far too late. They've been reduced to just Bibu, who gets swatted away at by Volps, who was playing that elbow position earlier. Manages to find safe harbor. Well played by Liquid, even though the pace for Wolves was good, their execute just a bit sloppy. That's what I was going to say. Very well played indeed. You can always kind of question in Wolves there, do you reinforce the elbow wall or not? But looking at the outcome of the round, it was a very smart thing to do because every single member from Wolves was attacking from the same side of the map, that back side, the meeting hatch, tower stairs, blue double door. So by reinforcing off the elbow wall where the shield is placed, like we saw, it limits where Wolves can really be attacking from. And a very big gap was found in the attacking side. No one 
one was attacking laundry. Nobody came down free. There's a single member who fell very early on in that execute. So every single member of Liquid can look in the same direction. We see it there. The second last person to die was the freezer person. So when every single member on the backside primary execute is dead, that's when the flank comes through. In reality, you have to send down your flanker early on to force the defenders to turn their backs to the primary execute and then strike from both sides. So a bit of a missing there or a desync for Wolves and it led to their demise in that round. And Liquid will actually do something that we've seen a couple of times throughout this major so far. They will go primary bombsite downstairs, so that's very expected of you. But their second choice for a bombsite is actually going to be a tertiary location. Typically, that is going to be, for this one, the dining and kitchen bombsite. Now, there's one of the Latin team that does the exact same thing. W7M had the same bombsite rotation. They, in fact, when they played Oregon early in this tournament, they went basement into tertiary into tertiary before touching that dorms bomb site at some point later on liquid with that lads meta is gonna maybe do a similar thing this is wolves map pick for those of you that didn't see the map veto system before we got into the match so at this point with all the oregon that's been played so far i think that with it being wolves map pick if wolves are not able to take these first two rounds pushing us to that tertiary bomb site then that becomes the win condition in terms of the rotation if wolves are not able to win dorms, that's not terrible. That's where a lot of teams find themselves on the losing side when they're on attack, but yeah, tertiary becomes the main focus. And as for Team Liquid, they can opt on either of those sites. Despite it being this dorms defense, you've got Team Liquid holding quite aggressively downstairs. Two players, both Palu as well as Volps, still in the spot. They're just waiting so patiently. There was a logic bomb. Mowgli assassinating Palu. Volps goes as well. That's about as efficient as you can get for Wolves. Yeah, it's a very hard decision to make if you're the attacking team, but they say, you know what? We know that these defenders are spread quite thin. We're gonna try and single them out. And as I said earlier, Mowgli, so efficient on the intra-kills. Sure, P4 on the Dog B makes the phones ring, gets an audible prompt for Mowgli to work with, but he hits his shot beautifully. And of course, Deadshot at the same time also took a second member from Liquid. So now Wolves can slow things down again. Their pace is so good. One minute, 10 seconds on the clock. They're attacking such a bomb set, but they got so much time to work with, much more manpower, and they can now swarm this top floor hold and then get bomb set control. That's a tough fight for Nesk to engage on, and he was caught. A rock in a hard place on that dorm's window, losing his life. And this is very different from the previous round where Team Liquid beat Wolves on every engagement, but now it's the opposite. Wolves have left just resets alone down in meeting. Not too far off of that black mirror that was used in that spot. Deadshot has his attention. Waiting. No diffuser going down. There we go, in the hands of Shinka. Looks to be in the kitchen bomb site. Now we go to the dorm's tertiary bomb site. I assume so. They could go back. Yeah, I was gonna say they can do whatever they want, but I, I don't actually got think psyched out. I thought that was a dorm yeah. defense with the way they were playing. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean they, they can freely choose, but uh, right now it looks like you are correct. They're currently hovering Kidstone's bomb side, but the early picks here from Wolves just paid off massively. So, I mean the collapse basement was perfect. Mowgli walks down the laundry stairs. Dead shot on the back tower stairs. Don't give me a phone call. Gave them the intel. They had a drone as well. No real chance for they to fight back. And the issue with going into the basement as a defender is that as long as the attackers control two of the three staircases, you don't typically have any way back up because, you know, Pillar oversees the freezer rotation as well. Laundry sees the hallway too. And that's exactly what they did. They pinched them in that middle area, that awkward position where if you run, you're gonna die. And if you fight, you're probably gonna die as well. The only thing I could see from Nico there is instead of swinging into those gunfights, if they hide in corners and like waste more time and utility from Wolves, maybe Wolves will then say, you know what, this is not worth the risk. We're not gonna chase these roamers. We're gonna put someone holding the flank or put a drone or something and then try and hit the bomb set instead with that five versus three because we know there are two roamers. But when you take the five to the entries of the attack inside, it just comes down to who wins out in those engagements. And that, as you saw, was definitely Wolves. T3 hold now for Team Liquid to start off round number three. Got a couple ways to take out any operator playing up on T3. The two that we tend to see the most are Ying and Amaru. Yeah. Ying is banned out. There's no Amaru present right now for Wolves. Instead, they could potentially get one of those Argus cams from Zero, an operator we don't actually see all that often, but is being used in the very adept hands of Bibu. 
with a secondary hard breach as well. So my speculation is that we're probably going to see this back tower clear, be in the hands of Bibu, get that can opener onto the wall in Attic, providing that oh. they're able to clear our resets, which they do. That was a bit of a sloppy engagement. I'm actually amazed that P4 didn't make a single point of damage. There. Yeah. Bit of a potato first, but I think you're absolutely correct. They're gonna go for a split take here. Thermite goes past the Patron Balcony. Zero with a secondary hot um, can opener to go tower. And it's gonna be a very classic old school style of Oregon where you are indeed going to be applying pressure from two separate sides. And usually, you're not expected to get this good big tower that easily. Normally, maybe you trade one for one, it's a 4v4. So, what was the get? a both side pressure attack, they get the opening kill again, and now Liquid, they're kind of scrambling trying to find a pick back, and Ness goes for a swing, does a bit of damage, almost dies himself as well, but it's like, Liquid strategically right now don't actually have a good way back into this round, unless they can start finding some kills on the board here. Ness can play Master Bedroom, he's got a shield and ADSs, whatever, but Lobby Control is Wolves's. They could do some vertical damage, whether it's the Ash or Grenades rushing downstairs, Mowgli just spent his last one, but so far looking good for Wolves. Split up both sides of the map now. The wolves confront the Kiva barrier on the bedroom and make sure that there's nothing inside of Attic that could potentially surprise them. They know there's a player in that position. And again, these changes to the Argus cams, which are somewhat recent, have a lot more power to zero in this position because the Argus cam is not going to be immediately visible to whatever defender is playing in that spot. Wolves right now looking for a pinch on Big Window, Master Bedroom, Attic. Yeah. Dorm's windows. <laughs> They've got pretty much every Attackers single part of this covered. We'll soon discover that Attic is relatively free. P4 second kill. Volps fires back, taking out Deadshot. But there's P4, who's blind, losing out on the engagement. Oh. Esk is there by the dorms, by the big bunks, doing serious damage. But long range, Wolves able to take him down. Lagonis now on white stairs, last player up four. Team Liquid as the diffuser goes down, and it's a big final part of that round for Mowgli. Two kills as he just walks in with tons of confidence. The Wolves grab their second round. And it's very important in that round that Wolves, they play both the Zero and they play the Valkyrie, or so the IQ rather, to combat the Valkyrie, denying information because Liquid, they are so strong at making the right decisions as long as they have cameras to work with. And we see when Liquid are playing in the dark and don't we know exactly what's going on, that's where they struggle. Wolves, they rotated multiple times. Master Balcony, Big Tower, Dorms Repel, Big Window Jump In, White Stairs Walk Up, like they are absolutely everywhere. But at the same time, they were striking and falling back and then striking and falling back. So Liquid, they don't know exactly what's going on. And we see here when there's like four minutes left from Liquid, not a single person is watching cameras, most likely because Wolves, they quite literally shot every single one, at least the ones that gained them any sort of useful information. So, info deny, big priority on the, you know, upstairs bomb sites. Basement, of course, as we saw in the first round, plays out very differently. You don't need a lot of intel, nor intel operators. You can only get attacked from big tower stairs, the hatch, uh, basically the staircase or hatch drop. That's really it, and blue double door. So this plays out, this bomb site, dynamically very different from the rest of Oregon. And it's why we see the defender win rate being so much higher on basement than that of the previous bomb sites. Oryx being brought by Lagonis, he's gonna jump up the hatch from meeting to attic, make a rotate, and play a a soft roam here. Maybe they figure out that Wolves did in fact not drone out the entirety of the map. They can pre pretty much try and find the weakness here if that drone network does not connect correctly and do not find the Gonis, he can absolutely go for a flank later on this round. You need to make sure that Wolves are doing bare minimum when it comes to drone work. I mean, most teams are gonna endeavor to drone out this map. It shouldn't surprise anybody. No. Liquid not really extending that far off the site just yet. Resets expecting Attackers an encounter on back stairs. That's exactly where he's positioned teaser. up. There's a drone sent his way. Here's the door break. And he goes somewhere else. Doesn't want that smoke, guys. Hmm. Now, they're on a risk losing the early pick again. And I, I'm pretty sure that Resets was playing like a bit of a bait game there for Lagones. Killing a couple of drones, applying a bit of pressure, slow them down. And so far, Wolves have not droned out Attic, where Lagones is hiding. He is Oryx, he can storm into that big tower tier 2 through the soft wall. He can, of course, if they try and breach the meeting hatch open, he can swing the attic hatch to meeting. The hatch is open, which if Wolves, they really start questioning, why is the hatch open up? You see here, the buck rotates, they know. The gig is up, the other is out. Beautiful catch again by Wolves. I don't know if it was a drone or a sound cue or just like really good game sense, but they read that situation perfectly, and now the one secret of Liquid is gone.
It's a rough start to this map for wolves, but they seem to have pivoted yeah. quite well. They have now it's been. wolves taking some damage. This gun's continuing to go. Mowgli had that huge final moments of the previous round. He's going to be a significant factor on blue. In a very familiar position that he was in before. Help drone out blue, and eventually we'll get the Flores into position. I think that's the first Rotero drone as well that we're seeing in action. Pillar's going to be a little bit tougher to yeah. hold. Same with bottom of the back stairs as Bibu opens that up with the ex-Kairos from the hatchet meeting. Doing good work. Very just, aggressive, Nick. I mean, again, when you lose the opening pick, you have to try and swing it back, right? So Toxic Babes got early. They have the Gory Canisters. They can pick up the shield, reinforce the wall. Liquid have options. And Wolves are slowly running out of time, but Neski's the hero, and so is Paolo. Yeah, well, this might just not be the bomb site for Wolves. Now they've lost two and surrendered what advantage they had, and it gets worse and worse and worse. Shinka doesn't go for the confirmation. It's all up to Bibu. Not a lot of bullets that Type 89 at all. It's being retrieved, and there's Palu to eliminate Bibu. Laundry supply played twice by Liquid on defense. They win it both times. It's not available any longer. It really is their domain. This seems to be a very, very common kind of Oregon game where defenders, they are just locked in downstairs, but they are struggling anywhere else. And that often gets us to a, you know, 2-4 side or a 3-3. Three, three. If Liquid can crack the code now and figure out one other bomb side than the basement, we can expect an even round, which of course both teams can be happy with. But right now, so far, Wolves, they have been one step ahead in what seems to be the prep work for this match. Always having a good answer, always reading into Liquid's um, secret weapons or one-off strats in those rounds, like catching the Oryx of Lagonis in the rooming in that round. <laughs> no, <laughs> there is one benefit to when your first member of your team dies, whether it's on attack or those on defense. That is that you have a permanent cameraman. No, not the not the former FaZe Clan member, but you have a, pr a permanent person sitting on cams, grounding your information, sharing which default cams are being shot, what everything that you're losing control of, where the dark zones are, etc. And when it's someone like Lagonis, who's your IGL, your captain of your team, who dies early in the round, like last round on Oryx, he can actually get a lot of value from the grave, whether it's on the cameras or spitting his teammates, setting up those coordinated pushes, or just saying, guys, this is what's happening right now. This is what you have to be attentive towards. That can get you very far, but if you're an injured player, let's say, could be any injured player in the world, who's not a very vocal player, perhaps. If he dies first, he might not get that same kind of value. And we have actually tend to see more and more oh, IGLs on defense play a more front and forward role across every single team, so that if you do die early, you get value elsewhere. I mean, for us in the NAL, you see Troy doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Canadian has been one of the standouts in that particular role. And when I say standouts, I don't mean in terms of ability or success. I mean in terms of who jumps to top of mind when you think about... Yeah, I mean, I mean we, we, we saw a super play Jaeger shotgun on bank, and then yep. if he dies early, same story. They can coordinate how to deny the plan, etc. Um, Merck, when he played for TSM, he became an entry IGL for their Magical Invitationals run. This has historically, the last year and a half or so, been done more and more commonly across pretty much every single region. Lagonis now will go from that IGLing entry on the defense to the complete opposite. He's gonna sit very far back on the Echo with those ex uh, Yokai drones. And he's trying to deny the plan to gain a bit of intel, but Doka could be here. Big counter. Throws you off your cams, whether you're dead or alive, and whether you're Echo or any other operator. Lots of information from Mowgli. Hmm. Very briefly, very briefly spots the player at the top of Freezer stairs. They marched oh. on over. The security. This kitchen and dining bomb site showing up yet again as the secondary site of choice for Team Liquid. Not particularly a good decision to go here in round number two. Wolves made it look easy. Look at that. All ten players still up. Shink is getting the diffuser down. They don't know. Easy peasy, what? light squeezy, but hang on a second. Team Liquid manages to catch Wolves right in the transition period between diffuser plant and post plant. Deadshot has to scramble to get back into sight. Diffusers down, unguarded, vulnerable. Waiting for somebody's hands from Team Liquid to shut it off. Defenders have eyes. Push up. Deadshot just missing the opportunity. Bibu can pop up at a moment. Oh. Let's reset hops on it. There goes Bibu to the rescue. But no, somebody's looking the other direction. Deadshot is just too far. 
I would say not the best post plant for Wolves, but they barely even got to that point as Liquid narrowed the numbers down from five to two in short order. The execute for Wolves goes off without a hitch. And then Team Liquid slaps back. Very puzzling round for both teams because, as you mentioned, Liquid should have never allowed that plan to go down because Wolves didn't take top floor. Nesco's there. They have the soft on server where they can see the guy diffusing when they went for the impact grenade. They even have the yellow pink information, so very confusing there. Wolves then get the bomb down despite that. But no one goes upstairs. B1 and Sledge proing is that meeting, doing basically nothing. Deadshot tried to go upstairs and recognize, damn, the attic wall isn't open up. The windows aren't open up either. I can't do anything. But guess what? B1 and Sledge could have easily gone upstairs and done something about that way earlier in the round and set himself and his team up for a stronger post plan position. I don't know what Wolves are thinking. No one can see the diffuser from the back side of me near the big tower. There's no angle. There's no line of sight. The wall isn't open up that way, the map isn't constructed in that fashion. So they lose out in that round. Liquid, they take the quote unquote five versus five retake successfully. And now they break into a worst case, three, three half, which is exactly what Liquid wanted and desperately needed after those previous bomb size of dining and kid storms not working out for them. Reload! Similar lineup to the dorms execute last time around. Surprising to see it pop up but yet again. Very final defense for Team Liquid. Yeah. He said the win conditions for Wolves were to win at least one of those tertiary sites and then ideally grab one of the main bomb sites. They've already done that by taking out the dorms, bomb site, the dining. Second time was not a charm. Liquid could go out to a strong lead to start off this matchup, providing they prevail on dorms. This uh, comes down to adaptation, because if Wolves are going to run back the same shot as last time, it's all up to Liquid as a defending team to, okay, what were the issue, what were the weaknesses, how do we fix them? One big key difference already is that they don't play Tier 3 in Big Tower. They just surrender that air of the map, so Wolves have more time to work with, but they don't get the opening kill as of yet. But then we see people finding great value with that Sam cam, or the Argus cam from Zero, Denying the mirror window, digging into a trophy. A so all of a sudden, things are about equal once more for both sides. All we need now from Wolves is for Shinka to get open that master bedroom generator wall to then have a bombsite presence. That's gonna happen now. Jammer gets spotted out before it goes below. Okay. Mowgli's just sitting there. <laughs> just sitting there on the Gemini. There Getting lots of information. Knows the attic is clear. Look at how quickly Wolves yeah. have been able to get towards the site and also gain so much information in the process. Got to make sure it's not done at the expense of the players down below. I don't know if Wolves wherewithal in that oh. spot has been particularly strong. It's not the Gemini this time. It's actually Mowgli. He made some serious noise on this bomb site all the way back in round number three, and he's doing it again. Three picks. D4. There goes the planter, though. Down goes Shinka. Lagonis and Volps there. P4 denying the ace from his own teammate. Lagonis in a 1v4, a very similar prospect. He was in all the way back in round number three. He's got a nitro cell to try and bail himself out, but it is nowhere near the target. A lot of spots where you can plant. Lagonis runs right into Mowgli. No ace, but a 4K. I suppose that'll do. Wolves will be happy with the way that they recovered the second part on that bomb site. 3-3 three, three, the first half. No team any closer to finishing this match. It's spectacular watching how much damage a single member can do in that previous round. That is Mowgli I'm referring to here. And if you go back in time, just just a couple of years, that would be Nesk doing the exact same thing to the opponent on Ash with Acox go way back in the day. You just walk in, you find one pit, you get the second, you chase for the third, and you find the fourth. Now, the one big difference is Mowgli does this off individual play the entire way through. However, he was enabled to begin the killing spree by his teammates. The Ash charge downstairs is why Paolo sprinted to top wide. Paolo was sure that the Ash Breach that he heard right next to him was going to destroy the floor of the Kid Storm's door where he was standing, denying him the angle towards the trophy door he was holding. So he sprints it towards top wide to reposition. Mowgli was there holding the cross, gets the kill. That's teamwork from Wolves starting things off. 
and then with a bit of momentum that's when uh, Mowgli rather just remain. takes it upon himself and finds those following third kills no one can stop him right Back now at least on the attack the inside but that's the first half in the books they get that equal 3-3 three, three round count and now things will change Mowgli of course we know he's gonna play a 1.5 escope he's gonna play the Omai the, the Warden etc and get very comfortable on this map Liquid now have to problem solve everything that Rolls put in their way and for this opening round, we're gonna go downstairs basement with the mirror, with the smoke. I think this is very expected if you're Team Liquid. We know that the European, as well as the North American meta, is all about playing mirror on basement bombsite whenever it's open. Whereas Latin, a bit more flexible, like we saw from Liquid, and they brought the right tools. They brought the Florist, the Twitch, the Capital. Liquid have both the, the smokes, the fires, and the Twitch tasers to all deal with P-Force mirror when they get to that bombsite area of the map. Yeah, no shortage of drones being brought by Liquid. Twitch has become a staple for a lot of teams on Oregon. Overwatch. Yeah, but not the Famas. It's leaky, gone. Some leaky pipes right there. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that. Gotta call maintenance. Gotta run it up the chain. Get somebody in to fix it. It's a long range Rotero drone all the way over. Takes out a deployable shield. Looks like it might have also taken out an ADS. That's great value, as we tend to see. Yeah. Again, you see clusters of utility employed by the defense down in blue. That's where Flores usually goes, but there's never a shortage of things to get in the middle of the bomb sites as well. Freezer as well can be a very important part to stack up those Rotero drones. No Izami on the board right now, so you don't need to worry about the Kiba barriers being blown up by the Rotero drones. No, you don't. No electric cameras either, so Twitch drones were just trying to deny utility rather than information. Shinga yet to find his first kills here in five so far. He's taking a crucial position and operator on this defense of Oregon. Of course, being that smoke player on basement, a lot is on your shoulders on that elbow position. And then that's a go to Liquid slowly creeping up the bombs at areas. Oh, Nask, you're usually better than that. Liquid certainly is, though. Three kills very fast on. Shinka engaged with the Kappa Tower resets, oh. trying to reposition. Gets his very first kill of this match. It's not long, though. As Volps takes him down, and it just seemed like Wolves were not ready. Liquid trampling Wolves. They take their very first attack. And there's one thing that Latim as a region is good at, that especially WCM and Liquid, who are both here, are very, very strong. Are probably the best teams in the world. It's playing together in those executes five versus five. The moment one member of Liquid was in danger or took a fight, all four other members of the same team are there with them. So even if they lose their gunfights, the trades will happen. But Liquid, they don't even lose their fights. You see, Paolo walks in, from the back side, meeting hatch. Then we have Nesk hit the freezer side. Then he goes into the hallway, into us the side itself. We had Ligonis follow up behind Paolo. No one from Liquid is actually alone in that route and they don't lose any of their engagements. Now, winning a basement attack is the absolute best position you can put yourself in on Oregon because you're not expected to win it ever, basically. And they did it against Utility, which by most people's standards is the hardest version to play against as an attacking team. Wolves, they recognize, okay, Liquid, they're experienced. They dealt with that way too quickly, way too easily. We're gonna change up our entire lineup besides the smoke and go for an extended roam. And look at Liquid's response. Five attacker repicks. They're gonna fight the roam now. How? They're gonna bring the Dokebi, they're gonna bring the Lion, they're gonna bring the Finga. Those are your three primary key operators to deal with the Roam. The Finga to boost your gunfights, if you take damage, heal you right back up. You can flash and deny the flash on your teammates, etc. Then you get the Lion Dokebi, that's to isolate the Roamers, make them stand still, make their phones ring to again figure out where they are and take them down. But they still bring the utility loot later on in the round. They bring the Retero drones from the Florist. The only thing Liquid don't have any of, anything of, is the Heartbreach gadgets. Because the hatches are likely open for them. At least one or two freezer are meeting. That should be enough if they can get a couple of kills. But they need those kills. That's not how they want to start things off. P4 is good enough for one before being immediately shut down by Lagonis. We are 45 seconds into this round. And well, they're coming to blows. Four players in the grave. And there's more to come. Resets, trying not to breathe in some of that gas as Liquid's numbers grow oh and grow and grow. Shink a beautiful shot. Relatively same position, he's picked up both of his kills so far in this matchup. He's got two more, and Palu and Laguna standing in front of him. Laguna's holding on to that diffuser as now Shinka repositions, but there might as well be a giant chasm between these two players and Shinka. 
Position given away by a logic bomb as the plant was attempted, fallen off. So it's going to be a tough spot for Shinka to play off of. We're not even at the halfway point of the round yet, by the way. That's how fast all this went down. Lagona's trying again. A second opportunity to get the diffuser planted. Shinka will fire a bit Attack prematurely, give his position away. As Palu scrambles farther back, and now Liquid will assume the position in the post plant. Defenders have located Shinka the is totally blind on this engagement. We'll have to check an abundance of corners. The moment he moves past Pillar, that's where Palu will be looking. And just as I say it, I speak it into existence. Can't help but feel like Wolves will pop a timeout now as Liquid go up 5-3. Yeah, I think that'll make a lot of sense if they did. And again, Liquid just playing so tight together. I mean, Nesk watching Big Tower, and it's like, that's not supposed to happen, Nesk. But then, guess what? The trade is immediately there, back to a 4v4. They go 3v3, but then they hit the bomb side with the roam clear because they got the line and the Doka B. And this is also why Wolves are winning their initial duels that could be a 50-50 either way scenario. Shing did a great job in the 1v3 to get to the 1 versus 2, but then he starts playing it way too passive, right? He has one Toxic Babe, he knows he can buy 15 to 20 seconds of time with the plant and I. But the issue is, there is a minute and 50 seconds left in the round because of how quickly it went, so time is not on your side. The moment that last Toxic Bait goes out, he needs to proactively look for a 1 versus 1 engagement while the plant is going down to try and get it from a 1v2 down to a 1 versus 1. Instead, he plays very far back, very passive, bumps goes down, and then you play the 1 versus 2 post plant, which in that scenario, with those positions, with every single member from Liquid being basically full HP, B is what we call unwinnable. So Shinga had a nice try at it. Couldn't find himself in that position in the round. Liquid, they have shown an incredible adaptation from a very strong bombs at hold, which we call a turtle, versus then a full roam afterwards from Wolves. And it took them four seconds to just attack our repick every single thing, change their spawn points, and then pick it apart perfectly. Now Wolves, it's on them now. They've lost their momentum. They're down pretty bad right now, three to five. I mean, they're defending Oregon, twice basement, loses up on both of them. They don't call the attack timeout, which is surprising, but they still got more things to come. They must be confident. It's their map pick after all. They've been preparing for this for a long time. Three members Ooh. in the big tower, takes down P4. They keep him guessing and he picks wrong. Well, it's a very familiar spot that I believe it was Reset who's actually <laughs> yeah, playing on. It was. Before. And it was P4 in that same exact engagement, just the other way around. Oh, nice kill from Paulo as he reads Mowgli and... Well, Wolves didn't call their timeout, but now oh. if this round continues to go as poorly as it has for them... Liquid just playing with their food at the moment. I mean... Can't help it, it's gonna be called after this. Team Liquid, within the first minute, find themselves in a 5v3. Look at how they played, right? They played a very slow, structured first attack around. A very quick second attack around. And now Liquid, they play that dynamic where, okay, they're kind of fast in Big Tower, but then while that happened, Paolo, like was so inside a meeting, had set up to cut off the rotation. So they play the middle ground now. Liquid are playing all three styles, all three paces of Siege, variants of operators and positions as well. And now after getting two kills, they slow things down. They can just take it nice and easy, make sure they hit all their... Uh, Check boxes, right? Get open the side wall. Get added control later on. Then start applying this phantom pressure. Open up the big window, the kid storm window. Keep them guessing as where we are. They know there's no Valkyrie, so Wolves are acting blindly off dry peeking doors. And if they swing into a gun holding that position, that's when they die. There goes a the nade. Takes out dead shots. Palu, the first person from Liquid to fall. Nesk not soon after. Reset's now in trouble too. This site working so well as Wolves have dug in their heels. Refusing to give ground resets. Recoverable, but the focus for Liquid is to hunt down Shinka in this spot. Diffuser going down, and Shinka will hear this. And as Volps to seal the deal, Liquid moved to map point on Wolves map. I hate to analyze players, watch them in one versus twos and threes, but Shinka honestly looks scared. He is standing still holding what we call a dead angle that no one's ever gonna swing because again, they will just walk across trophy from generator and start planning inside of kid storms. He could have held the cross, maybe get a kill on the timing when the team members from Liquid were rotating, but instead, when he hears the plant, that's when he swings, but again, it's too late, they've already set up. Wolves need to stop Liquid from getting to their, in, like, their end goal in the round because once Liquid they get there, they have their teeth in your arm, in your leg, and they are not letting go. You need to catch them before that happens. You are correct, Parker. With this, Wolves will call their timeout because it's 
It's frankly now or never, because next round it might be over for this map. Always split on whether it's a wise idea to call your time out when there's mm. only a single round left. You're almost at a runway at this point. Yeah, I mean, you have a lot to talk about, but you can only talk one round in the future because that's all that matters right now. So you need short-term solutions, you need long-term solutions, and you gotta win three in a row to go OT, but then that's where it gets problematic because you've burned your attack timeout now, and then you gotta go from defense to attack and attack to defense because you play a best three in round count in OT. I think uh, it was Lilun herself, actually, who was yeah. quite vocal on social media about why you take attack timeout sometimes and why you don't. I believe it was her and Corey having a, a situation there on Twitter where she said sometimes you take attack timeout not because it's strategical or because of like you see something. It can just be kind of you see bad habits that you've been trying to get rid of occurring time and time again and you just want to pinch it and like remove it. So this could be a strat timeout. This could be a mentality timeout. It can be a nerves thing. I think right now for Lilun, it's very important if you take that timeout that you go, guys, this is a best of three. We got a long series ahead of us. So this result, what we see right now, 6-3, don't be scared. We are the better team. We are going to win this series, etc. And as silly as that sounds, <laughs> you have to actually believe that you're the better player and better team, because otherwise, you will just stand still and hopefully wait for something to happen. But that's called playing to lose, not playing to win. Talking about the philosophy of timeout so much that we just glazed over this lineup that Liquid is about to unleash on Wolves. Finca, Blitz, Capital with an LMG. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Oh boy. Blitz is just making it his mission. The hands of Ops driven right into the site as quickly as possible, but maybe not. Like Freezer was the play. Yeah. P4 was playing it quite aggressively and has now fallen off. Most of Freezer is theirs to the taking. The wall's been carved open. Both, in fact, not a single reinforcement there. So extra long line of sight for the defenders to be able to react to Liquid's presence. So even when we see a Blitz being played, even if you don't go for the immediate rush on construction double door, you normally still see Blitz rotate their late round because it's very hard for Blitz to attack Laundry or Freezer due to all the long range and crossfires established. Now, that's not to say you could use your smoke grenades to make it easier for yourself, but I wouldn't be surprised to see if Volps will rotate, help the wrong team make it fast, then go big tower side, for example, with the finger resets with the global ability, and do a 2-3 take. Three guys front, two guys back, make it hard for Wolves to work against, because they got Capital, they have the finger, they have the blitz, they have so many tools again from Liquid to attack this however they please. What well, looked to be that brisk pace now slowing down. This is classic liquid. It suits wolves a lot too. They don't need to do anything. They are so good at just getting drones in that the defenders, it looks like nothing's happening, but there's a lot happening for liquid right now. They're setting up, cars are coming in, they're stratting and plotting and scheming, and they're gonna go soon. Flames going off will deny that area of the map. They're in. Four wolves, and now they go in, but Volps having to deal with the Wamai. Oh no, missing, missing, missing. Resets is down, two kills for Team Liquid. Oh. What? They trade back and forth. Shinka's managed to evade them all. Now he's got two players from Liquid not too far off. What? Lagonis is bleeding out. You're incredulous, Nick. <laughs> yeah, I'm blown away. I mean, they're being, bringing on the Rosie here. <laughs> he managed to take down Palu. Volps in a 1v2. <laughs> they're crawling to one another. Oh, Volps is going to narrow it down. It's all up to Deadshot. These players could be retrievable, but no. Deadshot's positioned perfectly well. It was a gambit. <laughs> Team Liquid tried, doesn't pay off. Wolves still in this. Two more rounds to go to overtime. They're in jeopardy on their own map. I mean, I was c confused. I mean, Blitz, Wolves runs in, thinks he injures the guy, does injure the guy, goes to the reload, Shinka falls to a window, there's a smoke grenade, ring out the rose from both players, and then Liquid members get injured inside a blue rotate. Blitz can't get to them. Very close round, all things considered, and that started off with Liquid losing one and a half member in that early engagement against Wolves on the blue side of things. Shinga looking alive in that round, actively going for the play. Even though he died at the tail end there, he was actually trying to make something happen, which is a big improvement mentality-wise from what we saw from him earlier, and it paid off massively. He gets one shotgun kill, does a bit of damage, and he gets Volpo's position by dying here to tell that shot where exactly he's going to be playing at. Then we see Jaeger just doing Jaeger things. Let's just one bullet, it's easier to take down. When Volps got into that site, it looked like he was going to be the first to die. Yeah, <laughs> he was the one who, he's the one who lived the longest, so... 
managed to make it to the very bitter end. He also walked around, I think, ADS the splits while then actually with the shield covering him, which we don't see very often. And I mean, it almost worked out. Now, the good thing if you're Liquid is that you have a couple of hours to kind of figure out the pace now here, right? What you want to be doing. And we know they have a deep operator pool. We've seen both the Blitz now, the Capital, the Line, the Finca, etc. This time it'll be Lagones on the Amaru and an upstairs attack. Woo! You like those, yeah? Where's the Amaru gonna go? Big question. Now, Probably tier three or on the dorms. And how do they get into dorms? Well, you've got the hatch inside a kitchen that's actually very convenient. Oh, yeah. You ready? Yeah. Not that you couldn't open it yourself. Oh, there it is. Or you go through the dorms window. Ah, uh, that's a frost man. That's a bad idea. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> You can go attic window, there's no frostbite, but the pit has one, so. Isn't it so nice of our observers to do this? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shrikel. Oh, oops. Almost has the the window, trying to again Reloading. cut the rotate in half like we see they could do so often, but this time, Wolves, great read, they see it or they hear it and they actually yeah. stay alive now with all members on full HP and Wolves, for once, are just sitting still, not fighting for map territory because they want to try and stay alive for longer. And with Liquid playing a slower pace, this actually could very well pay off for them to get into that clock factor where Liquid, they're pressed for time later on. Just saw three players on a single drone. Was that maybe two at, at worst? That's not bad. Match is still opened up. I don't know if Nesk has droned that one out. You complimented the drone work from Liquid. It will need to be very good with the way that Wolves have this structured defense. There goes an E1D. First one expended. They didn't know there was a lion. They certainly do now. Look at this on the window. Oh. Is this going to work? Oh. oh. It looks like it might have hit the window yeah. still. Not ideal. Down goes Deadshot. Bibu still in that spot inside of Armory. Need to live a little while longer. No ADS is in back pocket. P4 softened up by what was almost assuredly a nade. Nesk and Volps have taken some damage as well. Very slow mid round. Now transitioning into the execute with a minute still left. Oh, they hear this person proning. They know he's there. What can they do about it though? Oh, there they go. Nade from below finishes off the remainder of the warden. And now it's Nesk to sprint up white stairs at some point. Maybe catch somebody playing inside of the dorm site or over towards that foosball table. At this point, if you're Wolves, you need to go for these engagements. You've got to get those numbers right back down. Most importantly, you have to win those duels. Flashes go in. Mowgli getting everywhere as much as he can. Down goes Lagonis. Barrels into the bomb site. Top of white stairs now. What can Nesk accomplish? She's wounded. Mowgli says no thank you. Now resets is gone as well. Tactical timeout for Wolves working out so effectively. Down to a 2v2, but it's a 2v1. Shinka to clutch, oh. but he drops. The diffuser must be retrieved. Volps gets it in time, and he can go for the plant. Is he visible? Will Shinka be able to get there? Only a couple seconds left, and it looks to be good for Shinka, oh. who misses his opportunity, but gets it in the end. Breathe a sigh of relief, Wolves enjoyers. Your team's still in this one. One final round of regulation. And Shinka, who's been in three, one versus twos, and lost him because he's been passive, not making decisions, looking like he was struck, like he was nervous. He was calm and collected in that round. He sought out the 1v1, or the 1v2 into the 1v1, and drops the hatch immediately. Again, playing for time. Like we mentioned, Liquid on slow pace, wants to stay alive, the clock might be a factor later on, and Shinga played so well into it. Mowgli and Bibu not exposed themselves to any external angles, holding down both the armory side, the white stairs, the big window jump in, etc. The frost match so crucial in that round for Intel as well. Shinga gets what he desperately needed. Wolves are still alive. And I truly think that tactical timeout was all about mentality and controlling emotions because this is a do or die match. This is Wolves map. When you're down 6-3 as they were, you cannot, you know, play to lose. Where you, again, you sit still and you hope things that go bad poorly for your opponent. No, you have to what we call play to win. Seek out the play, create the play, find the gap, expose the gap. That's what they did in that round. Wolves, they still have arguably the tallest task ahead of them. The tertiary bomb site, they have not been here yet in this match. 
and Liquid, you know, they haven't shown how they're going to attack. So Wolves can be guessing. They did bring P4 on the Valkyrie to gain some in intel to work with, which I think is very wise for them. Liquid did not bring an IQ. There's no counter there. But they did bring a Dokubi, which I guess you can call a soft counter. Dokubi line have been staples so far through this match. Not a ton of reliance on Azami. Not as much as you'd think. We've had a number of rounds without her so far. <laughs> We've had a... Yeah, I mean, you know an operator's really strong when you go... We've seen a couple of rounds without her. What are two rounds we've gone by without <laughs> Azami? <laughs> Which That's impressive. kind of odd, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, she is that strong. You're not wrong. <laughs> it just sounds weird. So what, when Lion had a whole oh, yeah. 100% pick rate? Nesk! Oh, the phone call. He's in! Suddenly, Liquid strikes. Two very fast kills, answered back by P4. What? a sitting duck, though. Volps with Diffuser in hand. Wolves, you gotta do something. That's so easy. You gotta do something. Not die. Mowgli is miles away from this bomb site. finally getting back in. Wins the duel. Mowgli has been the superstar so far from Wolves. Oh. He might be able to get it done, but resets, shuts the door on it. 7-5, a scoreline that Liquid might not be the most happy with, but they snipe Wolves' map away from them. And now they move to Clubhouse, potentially seven rounds away from making the main stage on Friday. Welcome to Hit for Six. We've got the Sonics, a kind of NA team on one side, and the Wolves, a full EU team on the other. Representing the Wolves, we've got Bibu and Mowgli. You guys speak for yourselves. Yeah, every major since one year, so yeah. We are good at games, and we'll Ooh. prove it today. How many times have Wolves beaten me? A little, little humble brag right there. Not so humble brag, actually. Now, I know the Sonics. You, last time you played the Wolves, you came out ahead in a best of three. But let's see if you can take them down in a reaction challenge today. And in this game, one of these teams will be the fastest. You guys have 30 seconds, but at 15, you got to swap out. And, Bibu, you'll have to finish the remaining time on the clock. Are you ready? You ready. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. He's prepped. Go! There we go. All right. So he's not employing the any strategy. Oh, oh, oh. He's so slow, bro. All right. Three, two, one, swap. Oh! A <laughs> little bit of a messy transition, but they worked it out. I like the, I like the pose. Oh, he's in a crab position. Five, four, three, two, one. Time out. 35, a little bit of trouble there towards yeah. the end. A little, yeah, Jim, little yeah. shaky. But let's see if they can beat 35. Sonics, now please take their place at the board. Three, two, one, go. Right, he's got his pose. We're on our way. Go, Gunna. Go, go, go. Oh, go. Ah, stop left. Ah, one more. Ah, it's okay. Three, two, one. Swap. Oh, he's moving. He's grooving. Bit of an off stance. Oh, getting close. Almost there. 35 to score to beat. He's got to find it. Boom! Oh, he's made it. It's a victory lap at that point. 39 by four. Well, with a beautiful score of 39, Sonics, you have taken the victory, but that's it for Hit for Six. Thank you for watching and make sure to tune in for more. Welcome to Hit for Six. Today we have Space Station Gaming, 
versus Eminem. Representing Space Station, we have Forrest and Foltz, third team to qualify from North America. And of course, we also have representing Eminem, we have Yuzus and Solotov. Today's game is a quiz. There is an image hidden behind a block of numbered squares. The goal is simple. Pick a square, answer the question, and if you get it right, it'll reveal part of the image and give you an opportunity to guess the map. But if you guess wrong, the other team gets the opportunity to steal. Foltz, Forrest, which number do you choose to start out? We'll do five. Five it is. What is the longest match in Siege history by rounds? D2 versus, versus Empire, 2019. Is unfortunately Eight incorrect. Two. Eminem, that gives you the opportunity to take it out from under him. Okay, let's go Koi Paisley. Let's go Koi Paisley. Let's go Koi Eminem have pulled off a heist. So let's see what is behind square number five. I mean, if you guys want to guess the map right now, you can try. Go for it. You don't lose anything. Fortress. Fortunately, it is not Fortress. But it's all good, because you just stole Space Station's question. Now you have an opportunity to pick your own square. So what are you going for? Six. Six it is. So, question. What word used to be on the side of Tachanka's LMG? I have no idea, so. No idea? Nope. All right. That gives you the opportunity to take it out from under him. Like Lord? It is Lord, was Let's written go. on the LMG. Let's go. So, Space Station have stolen Eminem's question back. We can reveal what is behind square number six. All right, do you guys want to make a guess? You seem confident. What map do you think this might be? It's theme park. Can I get a 100%. room on theme park? It's got to be office. All right. Our guess got is office. Office on theme park. Can we get a reveal? Correct, two squares and done. SSG have won the game. That is it for us on Hit for Six. Tune in next time. Welcome back everyone. And today I'm gonna show you how to defend Oregon basement thanks to Team Liquid, one of the most methodical team in Brazil. Right, let's start with a simple statement, right? This bomb site has five different entry points. The first one being freezer, the second one, the laundry hatch and laundry in general. The third one, meeting hatch, then tower stairs here, and then blue over here. It's showing six because I pressed it with my elbow, but that's it, there is five. As you can see, one simple state here, Deadshot is on the freezer side, P4 is on the tower stairs, Mowgli is in blue, Bibu is playing on the meeting hatch, and then you've got Shinka on the laundry hatch. So five different players, they have man advantage, and one player per entry point. Now what really matters here is that they collapse together. Let's take a look at how defenders are set up now. As you can see, uh, if we play the round a little bit forward, let's look at the basement. Palu is here, Volps is here, Reset's here, and Esk here. What are they covering and how do you set up your defense properly when you're in a man disadvantage situation to hold the whole of this basement? Well, it's quite simple actually. Every player is in a tradable position. Volps is holding the laundry side here and Reset is holding the freezer side. Both of them can actually cover each other's angles because if Volps is pushing the laundry side, then Volps can, uh, Reset can swing. And if Reset is swinging the freezer side, Volps can swing and trade him as well. And it's the same story for Palu and Nesk on the, on the other side. They've got three angles they need to cover. The tower stairs, which Palu is doing. He's also able to react to a hatch trap. And Nesk is perfectly able to counter the blue double door. Now, if we watch the round play out, there is a first big problem in Wolf's attack. One, two, two kills, two guys are dead. P4 and Mowgli in respective positions in blue and tower stairs. And now, if you followed everything, there is a big issue of coordination here. Let's take a look at the other players. That shot is still in the freezer. Shinka is waiting on the washing machine in laundry. And Bibu is still on the hatch. What happened to the coordination? And this is the biggest problem with this setup, is that if you don't coordinate properly against a well set up defense that has good crossfires, you will die one by one without trade. Now if we let the run play out, that shot dies alone in freezer, continues to go. Shinka drops in laundry, injures Volps, but gets tra traded by the, the player in, uh, in the other side. And then Bibu is alone and will die to the Goyo shield over here. That's it. That's how you play Oregon defense. Thanks to Team Liquid. Hopefully you can do the same thing in ranked. And I will throw it now to Yasmin and the rest of the analyst desk.
Thank you very much for that, Al Fama. Very valid points being made as well, especially when we start to consider the attacking side, not only for the side of Wolves, but also Team Liquid as well. How did you feel like the attacking side for both teams went? I think both teams attacked relatively averagely here for the map that we're dealing with. Obviously, Liquid had their own sort of initiative of how they wanted to approach it. They brought the Malusi ban. We saw the Wolves, they did struggle on their attacks. The basement was the stronghold, as it often is. They did see a bit of success elsewhere, upstairs mm -hmm. inside of kids, where the attackers did a little bit better. But you're expected to win a couple of those rounds. The mark of a good attacking team is a team that can attack the basement. I think Al Farmer made a really good point there about coordination, about how, you know, Wolves were struggling with that coordination when they were in the 5v4 and dropping. You're meant to all go at once, and because you all go at once, you find somebody, because they've got a 5v4, will find the gap. Yeah. They didn't go all at once, they got punished. And if you looked, when we when we get over to the highlights for Liquid, Ollis just mentioned it there, the Malusi ban. Because they banned Malusi, that meant that Liquid could force the pace, and they had the coordination on their attacks. As soon as they got onto their attacking half, they pushed into blue. They pushed into laundry. That very first couple of rounds where they just took those laundry supplies, I think it really caught Wolves off guard, and Liquid came with a very solid game plan regarding their pace on their attacks. And it got them over the line, right? It's like, attack has not been great for Liquid throughout this tournament. You know, coming into this, they were, you know, very low in terms of their, their, their attack. They were below 50% on their attacks. Today, they were almost flawless on them. Well, Vox in particular had a standout performance for the side of Team Liquid as well. Is he typically one of those players that you kind of look to to be the star player? Volbs definitely can be. I mean, to, to be on Liquid and to stand head and shoulders above players like Parlo and Nesk is always going to be a difficult job. Nesk a little bit less so in recent history. Parlo has always been up at the top. I think Volbs has done a great job fitting into this squad. Mm -hmm. Resets maybe having a little bit of a quiet one for me. We sort of dubbed him Ratty Resets last night because he was pulling off worlds against Dark Zero left and Right, a little bit of a quieter time here in the server, but they got the job done. I was happy to see Vox have a really good, he really good map there. You know, he was actually, you know, he's actually the, the lowest negative player on Liquid going into this match, you know. He came with a big reputation coming across from W7M. We know he's got that star quality. He hasn't necessarily shown it in this tournament, mm. but if he's working his way through the gears, that's a... And that's he was shouting sign. as well. He was getting yeah. vocal yeah. in the in the studio here. We could see him. He was really getting amped up for the for the battle. And that's not always something that you see from Liquid. So it's nice to sort of see that level of energy. Well, boys, now that we're heading over into Clubhouse, Team Liquid's map pick. They managed to win the map over on Wolves's. But do we think Wolves will be able to claw back the rounds heading into this next map? I think this one kind of comes back to what we were talking about when we found out the maps earlier on in the pre-show. We were sort of talking, saying, you know, these are very strange sort of map picks to be bringing out here because although Oregon was the Wolves pick, Wolves are known to be quite good at Clubhouse as well. Yeah. And on the flip side, Liquid are known to be very good at Oregon. Like, I think back to a couple of years ago, Liquid are unstoppable. You'd never even mm -hmm. think to take them there. So the fact that we've seen it go so close here, I can only expect it to be fairly close again. It's kind of a really generic thing that gets said at times about Oregon, Clubhouse and Chalet, about how they're best of one maps. And I think it really does represent the map ban phases that we've gone to three best of one maps where both of these teams are at their middle preference maps. Yeah. And they're just happy that it's nice even playing ground. So, you know, Wolves are going to be very disappointed realistically with that map one because they had a lot of opportunity to win it with their good attack yeah. half. But they will know that map two, it isn't like they're going on a perma ban or a map mm -hmm. that's really bad for them. They're comfortable on the map, but so are obviously Liquid. Now, I know we were talking about this concept of the team synergy, the team energy as well, when heading into a best of three as well, being able to make a little bit of a comeback once you're knocked down on your feet. Do we think this comeback potential lies an awful lot in whether or not the side of Wolves can really get hyped up. Because yeah. Team Liquid are bringing the energy. I think it's difficult, isn't it? Because you look at Liquid, they're up, they're jovial, they're quite happy. Wolves on the flip side, I'm looking at some pretty sad faces over there. You know, they know that they're going into what could be their last map here of the Major. Mm -hmm. Do they have that fight to really bring it out? We've seen every single side of Wolves going into this so yeah. far. We've seen a great Wolves, we've seen a poor Wolves, we've seen a Wolves that had to fight tooth and nail for every round. I don't know if they're up for the fight today, Fresh. I mean, it's, you know, we say we see on every side, but in, you know, previous performance, we saw every side in the half. I thought they did yeah. very excellent in terms of getting a free free attacking split, <laughs> right? They, they got the free free attacking split on Oregon, but then the defense just went so, so badly on what is the most defender-sided map in this tournament. So I think, you know, for, for Wolves, it's about finding that stability. And like you say, you know, the, the liquid players, they're seeing the cameras, they're waving, they're doing whatever. <laughs> the Wolves players are looking a little bit down at the moment, a little bit like, 
Oh, this is going to be a rough one. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm curious to see what Inter and Pengu have to say about this upcoming matchup. Is this going to be our final map? Well, it certainly mm. feels like it could be. I mean, yeah. Liquid 7-5 Wolves on Wolves map pick, and now they go to their favorite ground. Yeah, I think if I had to, like, <clears throat> simplify this entire situation, I would say... If hey, hold on. Pretend I'm an idiot. Okay. If the... You did that way too fast. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something about you saying pretend I'm an idiot where I'm like, you know what, I'm ready for this. Um, now dumb it down to me. Dumb it down for you. So if the Wolves perform the way they did at the end of the first map to start the second map, this could be a banger of a game. If the Wolves start the way on this map, they started on Org in the previous map, it's gonna be very one-sided, I imagine. Mentality, as Jack and X kind of spoke on the desk, not looking too happy and confident from the side of Wolves. They've had about 10 minutes now to kind of reset and figure things out. And Operator Bands are also going on the way to see what teams they have in mind for this. Mowgli gets target <laughs> banned on Ayana. I think that's why he says, I'm Flex. I was going to say, this is absolutely targeted towards him. I mean, with the way that Mowgli was playing in the previous map, I can see exactly why they would decide yeah. to take that Operator out of his hands. Yeah. The question is, is what does Mowgli go on to now? Do we see... Maybe more Dokumi play. Does he take on the lion? Is he going to go with Sledge or Buck yeah. by any chance? I was going to say Nurk is also open. It's not Correct. banned. It was banned on Oregon previously. But because the thing is, if 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 Mowgli doesn't go onto a grenade operator, you are going to be down one set of grenades. And of course, we saw on Oregon both teams getting grenade kills or damage done on the attack inside. And Clubhouse is no different. You want to have utility to work with because the way Clubhouse works in a similar way to Oregon is that it's all about problem solving the setup that the defense presents to you. Like on the spaceman hold, with us the deployable shields, the key bearers from Asami, the bandit batteries, the Goyo canisters. You can just run through this map with your guns and be like, oh, this is easy. No, you need the flying spanks, you need the grenades, you need the hoppers construction for the walls, the hatches, etc. That's very important, especially on Clubhouse. Now, Mowgli is hovering Ash, so he does have soft destruction. Of course, can do the same exact gun at G36C, so maybe not a true flex player there, Mowgli, if you play the literal same gun and whatnot, but still, I'll keep it so you can play something else. Ash was an operator that I don't think either of you, either of us spoke about. No. Ash or Zofia as well? Zofia no. Is an option. I was expecting a different grenade operator, like friend like Nurk or Sledge. That was kind of my expectation. But Mowgli is your entry player. You don't typically want to put him on a Sledge because he might die early on, and then your hammer gets no value, and you need that to destroy the floor and kitchen right now, for example, in this basement attack. We do see a bit of a soft roam from Liquid. They are playing on the staircases of both the blue and the main staircase. It's why Wolves are taking their time here. They're gonna pay their respect, block open the jacuzzi wall, kill the default camps, the injured drone already ahead of Mokun instead of office, gym. And then just, you know, not swinging too hard alone here, right? Just slow clearing things, wait for the drone perhaps, and then kind of make your way. If Wolves can get to the hatches at about 1 minute 25 seconds, they're at a perfectly average pace for this map. So right now, actually looking like they're ahead of the curve, and it was a very quick entry for both teams in Oregon, and it's looking like the same story here. Effective drone work with the entries being confident behind them, and that secures Wolves to full map control with a minute and 50 left on the clock. They are in a prime position now to work the hatches, to break the floor apart, etc. But there is just one thing missing, like we mentioned earlier, there are no grenades or smoke grenades on the side of Wolves. So when it comes to the execute part later on, they have to go guns blazing and try and find these kills. Otherwise, I don't know how they're going to hit the bump down. Exactly at the halfway point of this round. Hatch is being opened up. Ace not banned, but no ace on the board. Going is playing with a nitro cell by that kitchen hatch. She might have pulled it a little bit too early on. This is where the juggling begins to try and take out whatever hard breach goes onto the kitchen hatch. Doesn't look like P4 is going to have too much trouble with it. First two X Kairos are successful. Four Boy needed nine. to open up the hatch. Second round should be good as well. And it is. <laughs> Yep, and that confirms that Wolves are in a prime position. Now, they got the buck, they can do self-destruction, but I'm not sure where Bibu intends to plant their Pshinka in this position because you gotta fight against Toxic Babes. There's still a C4 in pocket of reset. You got the Goyo, you know, canisters as well. It's going to be hard to try and get this done. Oh. Nitro Cell tossed out and down goes Mowgli. 
That was read from that church wall that you'd seen the lineup. Good patience from Liquid to just wait that one out. Take Yana away from him, and that's fine. Now he's gonna go with Ash instead, and well, not for long. Final 20 seconds. There's the utility dump down into blue. Deadshot will drop. Also a drop through Kitchen, and right now it's Wolves just meeting their demise at the hands of Liquid. Diffuser will need to go down. It's in Shinka's capable hands, but Palu ensures there's no more crossfire. You say goodbye to all the Wolves except for Bibu, who up on Kitchen Hatch might stay alive. A team kill comes in, it doesn't matter. That was essentially a flawless round, as Liquid didn't lose any players to Wolves at all. They start off strong, 1-0, an immediate concern on the looks of Wolves' faces. That's not ideal. No, and, and again, it, it really boils down to the operator pick phase where you have Wolves playing all on gun skill and trying to play for kills, and you have Liquid playing a very heavy utility game. I mean, almost as much as you could possibly bring. Bandit eyes, the church rolls being opened on up. You got, again, Toxic Bears, the C4s, the, the fire from the Vulcan shields, and of course, you got five members running at you. There's the team kill. Siege is a game where you can try and play for kills, you can try and play for utility, but either, no matter what you do, it's often about trying to counter your opponent. If they bring a lot of util, you gotta counter with util that destroys that piece for them. Otherwise, you make it harder for yourself than it has to be in those kinds of rounds. And Liquid, like we saw in Oregon, they're so good at playing together. If you give them the five versus five to execute and you don't have like a way to break it apart, whether it's a Ying or a Glass or a Monty or Grenades or something else with just simple gun skill, I just don't see you breaking apart Liquid. The same thing is said for teams like W7M. They have phenomenal team play. They play a tight defense and attack where if somebody's in a bad position, someone's nearby enough to trade it out and make it an even trade at worst case. And it's what we've seen time and time again, especially from the side of Liquid in this matchup. They'll just change things through. Basement, now CCTV, they play the Bandit, they play the Frost, they, again, playing around the utili utility and intel game. Now Wolves have to problem solve. They got Ace, they got Thermite, they got Thatcher. They can work their way through resets on the Bandit. It's a matter of how they choose to go about it. Currently, it seems like they want to, frankly, oh, ignore him. They want to go for a master bedroom gym construction take to start things off and just ignore the CC side for now. Start with Logi. As there goes the hatch. Boom. Sledge over top. A jacuzzi wall breaks as well. I'll be looking for a follow up, but a small drone going into logistics will let them know that it's completely empty. P4, making sure that he drones in Mowgli as best as he can. First impediment on this roam clear will come just by construction door. This is a CCTV and cash defense. And of course, the clear begins on the bedroom side of things. Mm. See that cams, good intel there. We saw P4 when he was introducing for Mokde. He was actually looking at all the corners of master bedroom and gym and whatnot. That's him looking for the Valkyrie cameras while doing the intro droning as well. Then we see Mokde, who is the intro player, walk to the main staircase and he puts his camera as the flank drone. Very small important detail because the intro player putting his drone for a flank means the support players can keep theirs to keep droning the rest of the map, droning the bomb side. And Mowgli, who's probably not going to be on his drones very often, he has allocated his to be stuck downstairs watching for that flank. We see the cameras being spotted out by, by the droners. A good job there from the supportive work of Wolves. And they've started clearing out the utilities, so Wolves have adapted their game now. But look at Palu. Great read on the Mowgli down in stock. Deadshot looking for the follow-up, oh, and he'll get it. It should be an easy secure, but you have to be concerned with that construction hatch. You have to be concerned as well with the stairs, but if you're not putting yourself in harm's way, then things get a lot better, and that's what Deadshot does. A bullet pen kill through the wall. Wolves were very quick to clear out the other side of the map. Now it's their turn to hit the bomb site. 40 seconds remaining. There goes an exothermic charge. Nothing to juggle, nothing to trick. Well, Amaya Volps just getting out of danger. Oh, dang it, fire. I mean, if you lose catwalk members here, it's bad for you because you gotta hold down the fort. And we see Visa's in the middle of the bomb site, so somehow not dying to the breach member of Wolves. Dead shot, he'd secured Palu in that same spot. Will now march up the main stairs. P4 missing an opportunity onto the bandits, but Bibu doesn't. Look at her sitting ducks right now in the middle of this site and a hungry wolf looking for as much duck as can be. The answer back into a 2v2 with time about to run out and Liquid will be the beneficiaries of this. They get the final two kills. Clock be damned. Team Liquid up 2-0. Triumphant start. Two of the better bomb sites on this map. 
what will the Turkish area be? It's a good start for Wolves, but a terrible end for them again. Resets was literally sprinting across the bottom side because there weren't enough safe positions left on the map for him to play in because of how good the job Wolves did at opening up every wall, hard wall and soft wall imaginable. And they get the one for one trade equalization downstairs, so it looks great for the attack inside. Again, great colors and people, but the time is running low. Diffuser dropped earlier in that round, and Wolves, they had the crosses, they had the capture, but they didn't have a way in. And if you can't get in the building, the bomb side, you can't plant down the diffuser, and that's not how you're going to win those shots because Liquid, they play far back, they play down the timer, they recognize that they got diffuser case control, they don't gotta do anything in that round. All over to Jim they go. For this map in particular, all four bomb sites do get seen. That stage bomb site was actually seeing a increase, an increase in the amount of times it had been played as of late, but at least from the few times that you and I have casted Clubhouse, we really haven't seen it. No, all we actually that much. haven't. It has been played by some teams that we have not casted this major, but you're correct. From the ones we've done, not that common. Clubhouse, the most played map here, in Copenhagen just inching out Oregon by a single play. Hmm. And Bar Stage is the least played site. Yeah. Only seven times has it been played so far at this entire event. Compare that to Cash CCTV, which is the next least played, which is at 28, which is exactly four times that. <laughs> so it's a stark contrast between the site rotation, where the main three that we've seen so far, Church, Cash, and Jim, which are the three that have been played by Team Liquid, mm. tend to dominate the rotation on Clubhouse. I would be shocked if we see our eighth bar stage play in this matchup, but who knows? Desperate times can call for desperate measures. It's crazy. If you go back just like six months, the CC and bar statistic was completely reversed. When nobody played CC, everybody seems to play bar. And that's the beautiful thing about Siege. The meta will just slowly change here and there, and it's hard to pinpoint exactly why the reason is. Ooh. Oakley trades back onto Paolo. He said, I'm done dying first. I get to kill this time instead. It's the first opening pick for Wolves. Resets in a bad position, what? and there's just no coverage because down goes the Kiba barrier. It's another freebie for Mowgli. Only question is, did those bandit batteries go down before he died, or did Jacuzzi wall get opened up? Wait to see. No, it oh. got opened. So not only do you lose the batteries, but you also lose your life. That's a bad spot for resets to be in. Team Liquid finding themselves down two players. Just a little bit under half of the round to go. As you lose more and more of this bomb site, you get stuck in unwinnable positions. The Wolves are already trying to narrow down these numbers and doing a mighty fine job as now it's Nesk and Volps reduced to flashing HP bars. But Nesk says, you know what? If you're gonna take me down, that's fine. I'll make you work for it. Mowgli a third kill. Bibu in hot pursuit of Nesk. Nesk taken out by Bibu. It's all up to Lagonis, Wolves. Set and ready to get their first round on the board as P4 shoves Lagonis in a locker. First round for Wolves, they win the tertiary site. Wolves have these rounds where they look formidable and like nothing can stop them, but that's like once every three or once every four rounds. And the other ones, it looks like they're making like relatively small mistakes that has a massive negative impact upon them. And they're struggling with pretty basic fundamentals of the game. And it's a shame because when Wolves are playing like this, I mean, they're taking Liquid by storm, it looks easy. But this is not really the case that often. I will say Liquid, big greedy in that round. Reset's trying to get the bandit trick with like, go, or the Valkyrie member just swinging the door, the window rather, to try and get the kill. The gamble did, didn't pay off. Mowgli again just is the individual player from Wolves who really can fight back. Always looking for those openings, always creating space for his team, but he can't do it all alone. That's what Mowgli dropping down from the roof, getting three kills in the round, and Wolves to win it with ease. But you can't rely on Mowgli to do that every single time. No. Especially when, I mean, he's been target bent as well, but he's actually playing <laughs> with a handicap in this game. He can't play Ayana. So. The rest of Wolves, whether it's better drone work or what I think they need, someone to just follow Mowgli, and whenever he falls in battle, you're there right behind him to take over where he stopped. And I think the perfect person for this would actually be someone like Beepu in this roster. But when Wolves are playing Clubhouse, you see Beepu being put on the more supportive roles because you need two or three supportive flex players because of all the utility. Shinka has to play IQ slash flex. You need two heartbeaters. That leaves his death shot and Mowgli 
as the front runners for the team, but we know Bebo can also play that prime position. He's known to play Sofia very aggressively on that second inch roll. That's uh, two rounds on Ash and now two rounds on Sledge for Mowgli, who was the bar none best performer for Wolves on that Oregon loss that happened just an hour ago. I don't think that matchup goes to 7-5. The five in particular for Wolves without Mowgli's contributions. No. Liquid would have been able to put that one away far quicker. So yes, having him show up, incredibly important. It's funny because I remember the early days of there being huge consistency issues with the entry on Wolves back when Rise was IGLing on the team. Obviously, it's a very different look now. Adding Deadshot as that other entry slash flex player. You hope that you get more consistency out of that role as Rise had his struggles as well, so. Wolves are always this, Wolves are always this highly touted team, Nick, but they just... They always seem to get so close and just not close enough. It's kind of similar with Liquid and winning yeah. the event, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. I mean, Liquid can make the finals, they can make the final four, but they struggle to get the job done. For Wolves, it's obviously... <laughs> Similar, but uh, not as glamorous because they tend to struggle in groups and then getting to the stage. I was going to say, they always make the majors. They're always there. They've made a big name for themselves, and they have done Europe proud in terms of qualifying and making top eight at most. Usually, as you said, going home late in groups, but Wolves, they want to make top eight. They want to keep at least bringing it to the main stage, get that stage experience, whereas Liquid, they are expected to make the top four, maybe even the grand final. So these two teams are fighting for very different things in terms of standings, but they're both right now fighting to stay in this tournament and to make it to that main stage and the loser of this will be going home and the winner will be joining the rest of the teams up on that main stage on Friday in front of a crowd and it is every single team and players goal and dream in their careers while we've been talking about that the entire run has flown by there's 30 seconds yep. left we'll open up the hatches they're setting up for the execute in the next five or so seconds they should be dropping down those hatches and trying to go for a plant it's gonna be absolutely manic inside of the b-bomb site as you can already see Wolves anticipating a drop through that kitchen hatch, and Volps is being ever so patient, but it's a bit of sloppiness for somebody as veteran as Bibu. Oh, Volps yeah. has a good read on it, and man, oh man, Wolves, what happened in that round? Ten seconds to go. Shink is the only person alive. Volps having an absolute banger of a round. Team Liquid picking up where they left off back in round number one as it's the second successful defense of the bottom floor bomb site. They won't go there yet again. Cash and CCTV will likely be the playground for the next round, but man, Wolves just waiting until the final second and dropping in blind, losing every single engagement one by one. Yeah, and it's again, I don't think you want to go up against Liquid in a five versus five when you're the attack, when your goal is to get down that diffuser because I think simply Liquid is the better team. It is difficult, to be fair, to get opening kills on a basement tech of Clubhouse if your enemy isn't roaming because they're all sitting comfortably on the bump side, but that's again, the utility game. Where's the Monty? Where's the Cavatel? Where's the two sets of frag grenades? They're playing IQ, Thermite, Hibana, and, and they play with 10 seconds left in the round with no cover and everyone losing their gunfights. It's like, that's not enough. Wolves are trying to play a smart, stable round of siege, but ultimately what they're ending up with is just playing from a disadvantageous position and they don't have enough members that can fight back one-to-one -one against Liquid. Again, it's kind of mostly fighting back or trying to, and the rest is kind of falling by the wayside. So Wolves, I'm curious if they're going to change things up on their remaining attacking rounds or if they'll just stick it out pop off a defense, you know, when do you take your tech timeout? Because something has to change this to go differently. And it was after the tech timeout previously on Oregon yep. where they started picking up success. They, they lost round number nine, it was 6-3, then they take a timeout and they win the following two and it was then a relatively close round before Liquid, they found those seven to five. So yeah, if you're Wolves right now, you get a small break, well, so does Liquid because we'll just go for a quick rehost before we get back into the server. Yeah, it looked like the lobby crashed, so we're just getting everybody right back in now, so bear with us here. It's a wolf. The plushies, uh, it's not a bear. As far as we're aware, team's not allowed to speak during technical timeouts. No. Let's look at it. Are they speaking? No. If you watch them. I don't think they are. They're being good boys. Who would speak during a technical timeout? <clears throat> Ridiculous. <clears throat> Got some kind your throat? No, it's been uh, like allergies. The season's changing a lot. I've actually had terrible allergies. That's what I'm so. saying, yeah. 
Ew. I feel like a little bit of a throat scratcher, a little bit of a runny nose maybe sometimes, I don't know. Feels bad, man. Now the rule regarding talking while the hosting and, and whichever is something that's kind of changed throughout Siege. It used to be that you could talk and then it changed very strictly about six to eight months ago where there was a global change in the competitive rulebook where doing a rehost that's like a technical timeout, you cannot talk as a team. And of course, this is also to prevent players from accidentally kicking their PCs and then getting a tech rehost and they can talk about strats and whatever. So right now we're just removing that from the equation and saying, okay, if anything happens, you cannot talk, you cannot, like, neither side can gain anything from this. There's no incentive to try and force issues, for example. Everybody's back in the lobby as we're talking about that. Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't want to get into the nitty gritty, but there have been times in the past where, you know, there have been technical issues that seem almost a little too convenient. <laughs> and then teams would speak during it. It is funny because after they instituted that rule, the amount of technical timeouts <laughs> actually did drop quite considerably. Yeah, it, so, it definitely did. So you have to wonder. It's about... It's about ethics, okay? Yeah. In esports competitions. Mm. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. I use that ironically, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But either way, we're back into the matchup. Seven teams have made their way to the main stage starting on Friday. For those of you that have not been following along, LATAM has been having an excellent oh, go of it. Yeah. Every single Brazilian team, of course, like LATAM is an old holdover from days past. Now we have a region called Latin America of which no Brazilian teams competed because things change. Just as how APAC is not one region any longer, it's a bunch of sub-regions that all compete at a variety of different tiers in the Rainbow Six Global Esports program. W7M, FaZe Clan, and Ninjas in Pajamas have all made it on to the main stage. Those are three Brazilian teams. A fourth could be here in Team Liquid if this trend line that we're watching continues onwards. Joining them on the stage from Europe, Eminem Gaming and G2 Esports. From North America, Sonics. And from Japan, Scars. APAC and NA having a relatively Five rough, and I say APAC, including all of the teams <laughs> in the regions. Good. Attackers As it should be. Had a particularly rough go of it, as did the Latin America mm. teams, the single MENA team in Falcons, though a very impressive showing. Yes. Without their IGL in particular, giving us a very exciting matchup yesterday. I think there's been a lot of focus on those APAC regions, by the way, and not enough emphasis on how poor Freedom! NA has done. I was going to say as well thing. at this event. Yeah, like going into this, given the roster change that's like SI and you know it's a new year, etc. A lot devices. of people, myself included, was like, okay, how do we rank the the, the various regions right now? Because normally it goes like EU, NA, or Latem is number one, and two and three, and then APAC would be at the bottom. That's truly the case. But right now it's like, do you put NA first, EU first, um, Latem first? Like, frankly, we had no idea. But as this major has progressed, we're slowly like starting to build that picture of, okay, what are we expecting from the regions? And NA, in my opinion, came in with a lot of expectations with like M80 and with Sonics, with SSG, et cetera, Dark Zero. Like they all look like incredible teams that have potential, but they've all kind of fallen short at this event. It's just Sonics remaining for the entire region now. Moles, of course, looking to join their fellow, fellow European teams in Eminem and G2. But uh, they got a they got a long game ahead of them to make it there in this base of three. I mean, if you look at the European teams that you'd think that would be almost certainties to get onto the main stage, mm. Eminem was not in that conversation for a lot of people. Virtus Pro obviously was there, and of course Wolves were there too. Now yeah. Wolves spot very much in jeopardy with the halfway point now of round number five. Everybody back in the server. Last time this site was defended by Liquid. They did a pretty good job of hanging on to it. Things got a little hairy there, and it was a 2v2 with only five seconds left on the clock, but Liquid ended up sticking the landing. They got the final two kills before the clock could give them the round, but it was a formality. They were going to win it either way. Yep. Timing for Wolves will need to be better this time around, isolating these players from Liquid. They've already expended some utility to open up this construction wall. Ooh. Resets. That is ugly. Botching the Nitro cell. Well, now retake construction completely blind, but the way that that lighting works yeah. is you can actually see them coming ahead of time. Resets is on drone, and oh, that's a blunder. Mowgli walks right in. Goodbye, resets. Next one up is Lagonis inside of Cash. Down he goes to Mowgli yet again. 
Wolves doing so much work. Reload. Main breach, though, still closed and unlikely to get open, so this entire execute from Wolves is going to come from over on construction side. And it's going to be very low on time as well. Power stuns, if you can't do much at Orcs, no C4 from downstairs. Breach has been opened up as well. Oh, I was wrong! Volps goes for a oh. swing and a miss on Abibu. Palu taking down Mowgli. The Oryx will want to get back on in. No. Volps has not been taken out of this position. Bibu now the only one alive to rush into the site, and there's a crossfire with Nesk claiming the trophy. <laughs> Good lord, the fire erupts from the benches of Team Liquid as they take four rounds in the first half. Wolves unable to win, but they can try to salvage this final round. I, I don't remember Liquid ever being this loud. No, like. not this, they are extremely <laughs> emotive. <laughs> They're laughing a lot about it as well. Paolo, of course, a very quiet player himself, very shy, but very humble person. But uh, the rest of Liquid are giving it their all. Volps, well, first of all, Mo clearly started things off great for Wolves again. But then it's Volps with a wall bang, with a pre fire, gets it back to a two versus two into a two versus one. And then again, Liquid, they got the time on their side, they got the pressures on their side. <laughs> <laughs> Ness. Oh man. I mean Nesk is he's a, he's a legend. He's been playing this game for so long. Like it's been it's been what seven, eight years now, the highest level of play. He's been a legend all, like the entire way. First guy to get a 1v5 base ever in Pro League against Black Dragon, oh, Pain Gaming rather way back in the day. Like he's been phenomenal. He's had his ups and downs as a player, but usually he finds himself on top. Of course, then Liquid 4. Oh god, since the very beginning of Liquid, I believe. Way back in Atlantic City, he was in that roster as well. That was a great finals. It was a great finals. I'm trying to remember who they beat. <laughs> it was a great finals if you were not a Penta fan or player. Uh, I was a certified Penta hater. Yeah, I think a lot of people were. And at the time, I was very much cheering for Team Liquid to prevail, and prevail they did. I mean, all the guys, I gotta be honest, if there's a team that I've always wanted to win like a major trophy in Invitationals, it was Liquid and it still probably is Liquid as well. They well, to be fair, that wasn't a major. No, no, like like now, like at, yes. like since Atlantic City, like if there was a team that I would want to lose against as a player who would steal the trophy from me, so to speak, I think Liquid, is, I, lo I love the players, I like the org, I like what they've done in the scene. Very I mean, kind. Nesk and Palu don't have a major championship. Nope. Like that's something that's sorely missing. No, before you might fly under the radar, but you'll walk right into that frost mat. Down he goes, but not before two players from Liquid have died as well. P4 is also recoverable, so not all hope is lost, but we still have sides right now. Team Liquid has completely surrendered control of the bomb site. Wolves have it, but the diffuser is nowhere to be found. Wait, wait, hold on. Actually, Shink is getting it down. There goes P4 as Volps will retake from the main Attack stairs. Got to get past Bibu. He's on the right side, and you're just sitting ducks. This gym bomb site, not exactly the territory that Liquid wants. They lost it both times. They went here. Wolves getting first blood, and then snowballing onwards. And the word I used in the previous round was salvage. They need to salvage that final round, and they do just that. Not before giving Team Liquid quite a lead, though. Yeah, and this is a very classic Wolves gym attack because they've done this so many times, both internationally and domestically. They go for a rush. One guy will no, run up the main stairs. One guy jumps off his hatch. One guy's on the windows, and two guys they sprint in the Jacuzzi breach as the exothermic charge goes off. We've seen it happen at all times. Liquid caught off guard. I love to see Wolves with a bit of life on their side. P4 getting active on the nook. Walked to the main stairs. Got the opening kill, and sure enough, like he walked into a frost it made things a little bit more difficult for himself and his team, but Wolves were, as I said, they're playing to win. They're seeking the play, they're creating the space, whereas on the previous rounds, the timer is five seconds left, they're not really doing much. So if they can bring that same power to the defending side, there is still life to be had here and some more rounds to be played. Five seconds to insertion. First half in the books. Both teams doing very well at drawing first Attacker blood, splitting it an even 3-3 diffuser being played by Wolves to success, but not as much objective play as you would think. Every single bomb site on this map is defender favored. For Wolves, that is obviously a boon as they will now ride out the remainder of this map on D, unless we go to overtime and then the side swaps will come into play. So with that thinking, Wolves will have the benefit of the map working in their favor. 
If Team Liquid can win this very first round on attack, then they will set themselves up in a significantly better place than if they uh, have some struggles on this gym and bedroom bomb site. And Wolves, of course, will go to the site where they won it, both times on attack, <laughs> and when they hope for the same fortunes on defense. The point I was making about Liquid striking early is the mental for Wolves has not looked great. You want them to burn that timeout. If you lose gym bedroom as Wolves, you break that mental. I think we would see a timeout popped early on. There's the first pick. Oh. Two picks, in fact. Good Lord. Wolves just walking right into the crosshairs of Liquid and with a minute off of the clock, it's a 5-3 oh, yeah. for the Brazilian team. That's just unfortunate, right? Deadshot dies first. When that happens, Mowgli, he falls back. He knows he can't play it alone, but then he gets caught that same second turning away from the gunfight. I like that Wolves are still playing front forward, trying to catch Liquid off guard and P4 being aggressive, but he gets thrown out as well. He does get the kill, however, and he gets away with full HP. Reload! Shouldn't happen, but it does. No. Consolidate now inside of the bomb site. It's Nesk taken down. He's had a more human event than I think we're used to seeing from Nesk, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I like to believe that Liquid is more of like a team now where everyone matters and everyone puts in the effort, where the Nesk and Paolo show is. It's mostly over, but of course they still have their moments, and I think it's a more reliable way of playing the game because let's look at Wolves. If Mowgli gets three kills around, they look like one of the best teams in the world. If Mowgli dies first, then they look like they have no teeth. Yeah. So, uh, Wolves has been a great addition so far. Reese as well previously on, and of course the goal is to make those calls strategically in the server as the in-game leader. But Liquid are now not getting them all open up. The EMP doesn't get the bandit battery either, and Bebo is there to activate the trick. Liquid might have made a bit of a blunder here on the Juhuzu wall. Maybe not. No, they get it. Okay, Bebo had fallen off as you saw. P4 isolated by Paulu, playing by construction window. Then there were two for Wolves. Frost mats will continue to persist. Bibu is an active gun right now on main stairs as Shinka is off elsewhere. Reload. Inside of construction. Droned out and unfortunately forgets about the tactical reload. <laughs> Back to Logi he goes. Liquid struggling with information. Lagonis is in. The diffuser could be planted down. They don't know where they are. Oh, Logi, here's Bibu on the case. Two kills from Wolves. Oh. Bibu might have just saved the day. And yes, indeed, that's what happens. <laughs> An exhale from the coach of Wolves. Lilu obviously happy with that first start, knocking some of the wind out of Team Liquid sails. They're still in control, but the gap narrows. It's so great seeing Bebo in one of those playmaking moments. He has so much experience and it shows when he has to make those split second decisions. He was playing main stairs and just avoiding all the members of Liquid. And when he, the time was right, he flanked up back through the hallway and Liquid thought it was clear, but he catched the timing perfectly. And that was Wolves winning a two versus four, which looked unwinnable for a brief moment. But look at this. Finds one, gets the fuser, and then immediately again runs away. Because if Shinga had died to the gunfight, then Bibi would be next in line. So they run in opposite directions, they use the clock, and of course the fact that the fuser is not planted, and they play strategically in that two versus one in their favor. And once they get that gym defense victory, they'll go downstairs and set to change things around. They keep bringing Valkyrie the intel, of course, warden to see through smokes and smokes and flashbangs, that is. And it bodes well because, uh, look at this from Liquid, Capital and Sense being brought from a basement attack. Bit of a new one with Sense. I've seen this before. I mean, blue is where Sense is going to go. Yeah. It should be. Very well might be. I would say there are multiple applications you can use if you want to. Whether it's main hall or in... Or have you actually seen... Um, I think it was W7M. Various major on the uh, Moto Door of Church, actually. We can also... You can do a couple things. Yeah. There is no glass from Liquid, so... If you do end up using a smoke wall, you can deny lines of sight, but you can't really act upon it in terms of getting kills to it unless you go for a blind spray. But of course, first we have to get there. Roam clear is step number one for uh, the attack and team of Liquid. They gotta drone it out and figure out, are there any roamers? Well, we know because we have the silhouettes on. No, not really. They're all on the bomb side or nearby at least, so Liquid should make quick work of this. Just drone it out, walk in, kill default cams, and then sit up. Smoke being brought without a glass is something we've seen before, but obviously aid you, especially with that sends on the board. This will be likely a smoke execute underneath that kitchen hatch and getting a plant literally right on that first panel. That'd be my guess. It certainly seems that way. 
because you've got two operators carrying those smokes, quote unquote, because obviously Volps ascends, they yeah. bring different types of smokes, they're a different level of concealment. Put those on blue, put those in church, and then drop the smokes from the Capital crossbow over by kitchen. Gotta get those players out first, though, and then somebody from Liquid will likely go for Dirt Tunnel, or maybe they'll just ignore it entirely and allow them to exist inside a dirt while somebody watches from hatch above. That's entirely possible. Yeah, I mean, the main point here is that, look at this, they have so many options from Liquid. I mean, you can use your impact grenades to destroy the sense wall, which people did earlier on, to destroy some of it at least, and the last impact goes down on Church, but that means now Liquid, if they want to, they could try, actually, no, I take it back. I mean, unless you're gonna use the Capital can open on the wall, it's not gonna get opened up any further. Well, two separate players from Wolves finding themselves in a bad spot. So both Mowgli and Shinka take damage. It's P4 to die, though, not anybody who seemed involved in that first fracas that happened. Down goes Mowgli to the fire, and now it's Deadshot's HP being chunked away at Bibu on the board, but just like that, Liquid getting their licks in. Bibu, oh. tremendous play from inside of Church. He's reduced this to a 2v2. Deadshot's hurt, but still upright. Bibu missing an opportunity on the cross. Agonis is in. Last two players now will need to be watched by Volp. Sees the difference maker. Can't do enough damage to Bibu. Watching the same angle. A retake from above. He has an idea, oh. but he can't get to the hand in time. Trying to play it out. Leaving Bibu for Deadshot to retake. Now it's all on the oh. shoulders of Lagonis. Oh. And he can't get it done. A quad kill from the captain himself. Wolves will tie the game. Experience is one of the most important aspects in those rounds. And again, it's the right man for the job who finds himself alive with one HP in a one versus one. Again, Liquid actually making a mistake we would never see from them. They mess up the 2v2 post plant. They knew exactly where both members were. They had a red ping in kitchen. They saw the gun barrel from Asami inside a church, and they actually started running around in circles and didn't get anything done. It was such a beautiful utility game from Liquid. The sense wall for distractions, the fire clears out the blue member, etc. They actually cleaned out that entire bomb site without firing many bullets. But then here, people with the last bullet basically. He had five spare, but he stopped shooting. Wow. Big rounds for Wolves. I mean, they're winning in clutch moments, so they are winning rounds. But I have to say, Liquid, they already had one bow for those previous rounds. Jim was a four versus two in favor of Liquid. Basement, a four or five versus two in favor of Liquid. And then Wolves clutch it out. At some point, the clutch factor is going to stop for Wolves. And before that happens, they have to figure out the 4v4 and the 5v5 because they cannot rely on that factor being there every single time. At some point, people will fail his team. At some point, he will fall in the 1v1. For now, it's worked. But something has to change here. Liquid are now tied up 4-4. This is Liquid's map of Clubhouse. Neither team used their timeout just yet. They're both in that same exact position. Now, that's what we talked about with defense being so strong on Clubhouse. Every single bomb site defender favored. It's conceivable that the defense goes 6-0. and oh. We've seen 6-0 oh halves before. Yeah, of course anything is possible. We see if the bandit trick here is successful. There's nothing really stopping the bandit from actually going through, but he, you know, people just run away, too risky. So, wall gets off opened. That, off that bandit trick on jacuzzi wall, was it, as well? Yeah. Defense and gym. I think he's just paying a lot of respect, thinking that there's probably gonna be a nade below or something like that, no one to risk anything. And again, if you're if you're people, you're eight and one, you just clutch two rounds in a row, I would also want to play for my life and play it safe and be like, you know what, maybe I can bandit trick this, oh, there's a nade, I'm dead. You so. find yourself in a tough position, right? Because you've got Bandit keeping the wall closed yeah. is arguably as important as getting some high value picks True. on other players. Of course, it is dependent on the way that Liquid is going to attack this site. The one thing that Liquid has been very good at so far on all these attacks oh. are getting in the first punch between these two teams. And you already see it now. Mowgli and Bibu basically dead, but still upright. It's forced them to get off of the position that they were holding inside of CCTV, and it puts them both on a single shot. Not a great spot to be in, especially for Bibu, whose 8-1 kill since coming back from the rehost is a mighty fine tally.
Of course, all eyes are on P4. The Catwalk player on the Asami has ADSs, but no one might disc. So that last kept a firebolt arrow could definitely take him out of his position. Liquid so far. Again, just waiting around, not making any actionable plays right now. They want Wolves to be moving and then catch them with their net. So just holding on right now. Oh, reset, seeing P4. They run in, but they don't expect a swing from the Malusi. Oh. Nesk is there for both the hole. Shinka appears out of nowhere over from Red, losing no HP in the process, blunting the momentum of Team Liquid, denying them more of the map than they wanted. Fuser also needs to be picked up. Lagonis will do just that. On repel as that gas will linger in front of his eyes. Shinka still has two gas canisters in pocket for the final 30 seconds. That is an extremely strong spot to be in. Providing, of course, he doesn't get picked off. Oh my, that was close on red stairs. And now with the shotgun out, engaging on Lagonis, can't do it. Deadshot actually has a flank and could pull it off, but no Volps is the hero. Wolves managed to storm back and tie the game, but Liquid only let them borrow those rounds. <laughs> Five on the board for Liquid. It's their first victory on attack. It comes on Wolves' tertiary site. I really do like how Liquid chooses to play that three versus two. A lot of teams, they will just kind of go for the plan, play it nice and safe. It's what you think that it's, that would be. But no, they try and go for the kills. As a member, it's beautiful injury by Nesk, by the way, to open things up. But you look at this. Instead of panning and playing it safe, the guy here in the future turns around. Capital is running CCTV overall as well. If they were going for a plan and somebody dies, you're back to a 2v2 for Liquid. One guy is panning, that's a one versus two. All of a sudden, you lose yourself again in those rounds. So because of the clutch, from walls on gym defense and on basement defense they could recognize going for the quote-unquote safe play is actually not the right play we have to try and take these guys out of the server entirely and win by kills it pays off bb wasn't there couldn't be a hero the rest of walls trying to fight it back without him and it was close but not close enough cctv is hard to defend and it kind of boils down back to that, you know, the bandit trick. Let's say Beeble had actually tricked the wall. A lot of things could have gone differently because we saw from our perspective, Liquid had no way to deny him the bandit tricks. There was no nades below. Captain was outside of garage, so couldn't fire the window behind him, etc. And in this scenario, if you want to trick walls, maybe just trade who plays bandit on defense. Give it to P4, give it to Shinka, give it to Dentro to have it there. Honestly, uh, Terrible club out so far going one and five as one of those intra players and then enable people to do more things for his team instead. Reloaded. Back upstairs to the same bomb site that Wolves are actually undefeated on in this matchup, both mm -hmm. on attack and defense, which is always a fun statistic to reference when it ends up happening. A little bit of hard destruction will be immediately used to open up the wall in the CCTV from Garage. It's a beautiful toss from the garage door. It's a nice cam. That too. Hard. Right now, these, these cameras from Wolves are all off-site. They're all designed to gain information before Liquid can continue to amass more map control. Oh, oh my no. god. Nade takes down P4. He's immobile in that position. They've got the ping. They've got the red ping. They've got the yellow ping. But is there follow-up? I mean, that was beautiful. They excited the wall to bait someone to shoot the pellets, and at the same time, they could the grenade below. P4 went to counter, but immediately finds himself injured. Surprise, not that yet. Oh, great. oh, Palu gets it, but what's the cost? You secure the down, that's great, but now you've lost Palu, not ideal. Nesk lets one member of Wolves fly on by from that breach. They decide to take the engagement themselves, and Nesk doesn't want to do much more with that. He will find some security out on the roof. At least from side Liquid, Paolo had spin both his grenades. And technically, it's how they got P4. So it is a one for even trade, mode using C4. But this means that there is less key barriers on the defensive side, which means that there's not as many playable spots on the bomb side for when Liquid wants to strike. And they've changed their approach. They've actually baited the members of Wolves away from CC. And now they're going to just flank, take it free instead. Smart. Goes walking in. Oh, they know. Oh, a dead shot is there. No, but Deadshot can't buy a kill in this match. Mowgli has been terrific so far through these two maps, continuing that trend, swatting away at the Liquid players, and he's doing double duty, but oh. luck might run out. Completely blind. Down goes Volps. So the advantage is actually in favor of Wolves at this point. 
Mowgli down for the count. Laguna softening up multiple players. Now he seeks shelter himself. Does he know that there's one inside of the bathroom? It doesn't seem it. Shinka picking them all off. Lagonas cannot do enough. Wolves winning their fifth round. We are tied again. Those oh, Hiba Bear is so important. I mean, whether it's a deployable shield or a Hiba Bear, if you have neither of those two, that round doesn't happen for Wolves. That is utility at its finest, and Shinka playing around that beautifully. Mowgli asserting that aggression early on, and the rest of Wolves playing around. They're dancing back and forth, and Liquid, they're just trying so hard to catch those rabbits running around, but they get punished from it because Mowgli is, look at this, he's dancing back and forth, survives it as well for so long, and then Shinka just does the same thing on the barrier. <laughs> <laughs> that gym bomb site, they're not gonna lose it. And would you look at that? All four bombs have not been played out because Wolves, they actually take us that bar bomb that says eight times played this major total. Eight times played so far. And if you want the specific stats on it, it's been one just a bit above 50%. Yeah, that's pretty good. Four times of the seven, it was won by the defenders, three times by the attackers. Ten seconds left. Very low sample size, though. So yeah, of it's course. Effectively, a coin toss. It uh, it does play out very differently, which means that Liquid will change their approach in the attack because this is all about having map control above the bomb side. Hold on to master bedroom and office and jacuzzi gym. This basically left hand portion of the map. Of course, construction hatch is open. It's going to oversee the bar stage area of the bomb side as well. We could go for a plant if you're an attacking team. So normally what teams will do for Liquid in this case is simply go above, take away what the defenders want to keep a hold of. So it's almost like a gym attack essentially, but there is one big difference. After you clear top floor, you can't plant because the bomb is that is in fact downstairs. So you're working two different layers now on the attack inside, but you still only have three minutes to work with. So a lot more details to be ironed out for Liquid and you can either buy your time in getting opening kills, of course getting map control, Nesk has sprinted into strip and taken a portion of the map, but there's going to be a castle barricade in front of him on that pool table double door that's going to stop him from seeing the bomb side, but it might maybe catch somebody up to that hatch at some point in this round. Can't just open up the strip wall and go for a plant like you could on the day oh, yeah. before. <laughs> Clubhouse where it was a single wall stopping you from getting that diffuser yeah. down. The pool table plant. Clubhouse plays out a lot differently, and you're absolutely right. The top floor is going to be the big focus for Team Liquid. Now, we've seen teams before just decide against tackling it. Go straight for the site, possibly get the main door open, go for a plant right on the stage, because there's only two ways to die at that particular spot. Number one is from the hatch above you inside a construction or B, or number two, it's getting swung from the main door. Oh, my. That's an easy kill for Nesk. P4 looking the wrong way. Liquid, they want match point. They're one kill closer to it. It is hard for Liquid to plan. They only have two smoke grenades, no Osa, no shields of any kind, no Monty, etc. So they are going to need a significant portion of the map in their control or get a couple of kills to work in their favor because otherwise, the members above, they'll see the plan with that bulletproof camera. It could be Volvo flashing main stairs, could be the barbed wire, but people force back upstairs further just to hold top floor control. It's got that M870 in the hands of Bibu as well. It can do some serious damage. And it's being toyed into this one. He comes ever oh. closer. Flashes go the wrong way, but he's too far to do any damage. He's trying to coax them into the engagement. All the while, Shinka takes down Nesk. Diffuser in the hands of Lagonis. Mowgli attempting the flank, but he gets spotted out by the bathroom door. Have run right into Volt. But Volps looks away at the last second. Pulls out the primary instead of the sidearm. Oh. Take that engagement a little bit differently now. And Volps, you don't have the diffuser. You just missed out on the warden above as well. Sidearm in. This is a very sloppy set of engagements. Bibu looking oh. to do some damage, missing out on it. Resets on a single point of HP. Palu down to dead shot, only dead shot second kill. Lagonis gets the diffuser down successfully. Bibu has to retake with the pistol out because the shotgun will not get it done. And I think time might have run out on Wolves on this round. Dead shot on that hatch, dropping in, and oh. Lagonis was waiting for it. Match point and phase point for Liquid as they would lock in the eighth and final spot with one more round. 
such an incredibly close round. The fact that it lasted for that long just goes to show how evenly these two teams are matched up against one another. That should have either been an immediate plan denial by Wolves and then win the round, or Liquid storming for the bomb side, just finding success. But both teams played it so well for so long, but there was so much confusion and so much chaos. B will play shotgun main stairs, getting reaches down to it. One single point of HP. There are so many small micro things that happened that just slightly favored Liquid, and the fact they got the bomb down was the main part due to them shutting down those cameras, the Bulletproof, the Valkyries, and then the defenders seemed to not knowing where the plant was going down because Liquid did not have any top floor control. That was all on the side of Wolves as we saw with Castle dying top floor at the very end of the round. And this is kind of a scary moment. Liquid have been formidable at attacking the bunker down bomb sites on Oregon and also on Clubhouse, and it's match point in favor of Liquid. And Wolves will go to a bomb site they have not really done the best on so far. Sure, people clutch the one versus two, but other than that, they've been dominated on this basement hold, and they're gonna go there again. Operate out lineup wise, nothing's really changing. People granted a bit more freedom playing Asami, not the bandit, but outside of that, everything's the same as before. It all comes down to this. I mean, you gotta look at that stage hold for Wolves. It certainly was a bold move to do that. Yeah. On such a crucial round. Wolves win, they go to match point. Team Liquid will not lose in regulation. Overtime is the only way that they go out of this in the wrong direction. They've already won two rounds on attack, which is basically what you're looking at for a lot of these teams on Clubhouse. I like the Sens pick yet again. I don't know if it was necessarily super integral to the previous execute on the church. Wolves ended up winning it in the post plan, if you recall. Yeah. I mean, I do believe in the Sens that it helps build into this, like, chaos effect where the defenders don't know what is going on, only Moten and Walking can actually see through the barrier. But I do agree, it was not integral to the success of the previous round. It just played a minor part in it. It was also paired with the Capital, so they attacked Jim and Blue at the exact same time. So the fact that Capital is missing just kind of tells us that it's going to be a different approach now for Liquid. I like the Valkyrie cameras in Garage. They could go try and go for a flank if oh. nobody's going to be there, but they see the Claymore. But they also know now that Nesk has left that area of the map. Bebo has two impacts in pocket. They could try and make a play with this if the Wolves want to try and go for it. Bebo tossing out a nade, getting rid of one of those Claymores from Nesk, as we'd spoken about. And now you have that highway to get back on a flank. Ooh, oil pin. Oh. Nesk oh. testing his luck, losing it. Palu takes down Mowgli. At least somebody pays for Nesk dying. <laughs> ADS will eat one of those smoke screens tossed out by Sens. Another goes down as well. Two of them there. Nobody being compelled to fight. They're going to wear out. Be a good nade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Keep a barrier protecting dirt as well. And here bullets go through the smoke. Palu's been so good so far through this round, and the advantage for Team Liquid means you do not want to find yourself in that position. It'll be Shinka to test it, though. Providing there's still one there. Oh! Shinka's gonna get the secure with the gas after downing Palu, and now it's dead shot, but unfortunately, he can't land any of those shots at all, and he's dead. Oh. P4 finds the sends and the pivot towards Lagonis. It's P4 in a 1v2, but Volts sends Wolves home. Liquid moves on. They will play on the main stage on Friday. All eight teams locked in. Brazil, half of them. Yeah. Very dominant showcase in front of Brazil as a region. Liquid, they had really great moments at both Oregon and Clubhouse. Wolf was trying to fight back so hard, but it mostly comes down to Beeble and Mowgli individually for Wolf to try and make that happen in that final round. People are fighting for his life, but the trade is there, and Wolf, who didn't have the best tournament so far, showed up big in this series and in that final round. Well, you had some hero plays from different players on Wolves, but ultimately the team just could not stack up. Far more consistency, member to member on Liquid, and that's what they assembled this roster for. They wanted the best of Brazil that they could put together on the roles that they have. 
And despite some early struggles, Liquid have bounced back. They made it at the very final moments in the 12th round. Again, all rounds <laughs> needed in both map one and map two. Ultimately, I think there's going to be some questions here for Wolves. The big one is going to be Oregon. If that goes their way, yeah, they lose Clubhouse, but then, then you go to Chalet as your yeah. map, and it's anybody's game. Wolves always seem to get so close, but they just cannot get it done. Well, there's another opportunity in the fall, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, major, but yeah. for now, we say goodbye to another European team. I guess the only upside is their flight home is nowhere near that long. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you can't say it wasn't an exciting 2-0. No, it, it was an exciting 2-0. It was a close one at that. I had to say, best of threes, of course, played a bit differently from best of ones, especially with map pulls and the draft that comes with it. And Liquid, of course, being a familiar to of three team, and it showed right here. Well, that was our last matchup of the day, but we're not done just yet because you want to hear from the desk because we've got an interview ready for you. Enjoy. Well, 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 Lagonis, congratulations are in order for you and your team. I've got to ask, how does it feel after that game? Yeah, it feels amazing. Uh, it was an intense game, like mm -hmm. close rounds, very, very close. We throw a little bit some rounds uh, that we should have won, but I'm very happy that we qualified for the playoffs. Well, how does it feel being one of the four Brazilian teams that have made it to the major finals? Yeah, I'm really, really happy about our region. Like yeah. all four did it, uh, make it to the, to the playoffs. So I'm, I was, I am very happy. Like I was a little bit, uh, we were a little bit in pressure because mm -hmm. we were only the only one team that was not qualified. But now we are qualified, so I'm pretty happy. Well, congratulations. Now I want to take things back to the operator ban phase. Um, for the very first time, we saw Melusi being banned in the entire tournament. Um, so what was the thought process and approach behind that? Because then we also saw an Iana ban, ban coming out from you yep. guys. So about the Melusi band, like uh, we studied the, the, the Oregon that they play in the other days and other championships. Uh, they use it a lot. Uh, a lot of Melusi, it's too much, like in two of the three rounds, two of the three bomb sites that they defend. Mm -hmm. So, and I think like uh, in overall, they love playing Melusi, like not, not only in Oregon and other maps, mm -hmm. they love to. So it was a good band for us. Like we, we don't play that much. So yeah, it fits. Amazing. and. Um, I got to ask, why do you think all of the Brazilian teams have been so so strong coming into this event? Are there any key differences you've noticed in the Brazilian play style? Mm, um, I don't know about like the play style. I don't think that's the big difference. Mm -hmm. I think the energy that the, the Brazilian teams like are bringing, like not me that much. I'm a little bit more focused when I'm playing, but like the team and the other Brazilian teams like are very hyped. And yeah, I think this is the most different. Uh, think about uh, our region at this time. Yeah, honestly, the Brazilian teams have been making some noise over here in the studio. And my final question for you is if you have anything you want to say to the fans at home or anybody that's been supporting your journey. Okay. So for everyone that was cheering for us, I'm very happy. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah. And we are still um, getting better and better. And I hope to see everyone in the arena on playoffs. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brazil have gone and done it again, boys. They have. It's a bit of a habit, this, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, have been here before, <laughs> fresh. The more things change, the more they stay the same when it comes to Brazilian Siege, and particularly, you know, Team Liquid, FaZe, Nip. They, they keep doing it. They're dominating right now. The real question is, though, do we think they are going to be the team to look out for heading into finals? Oh, I think, you know, before the tournament started, I think Liquid would have been, and they always are, every single tournament, one of the favorites. I think a couple of the other Brazilian teams have, you know, come into the fold, particularly W7M, as probably the favorites, you know, going into the bracket on Friday, but uh, Liquid have the, done themselves no harm there. It was another very good performance coming out of them. Getting it done in two maps, they'll be very happy with. A good performance, getting it done in two maps, but scrappy, scrappy, scrappy all the way, Fresh. Yeah. Even down to that last round, it was one of those situations where you kind of watch it and you're like, you need to wait for the defenders won the round, attackers won the round to yeah. pop up at the end, because everything is happening within a split second. Your heart has got to go out to Wolves, and especially BB, because I feel like he played his absolute yeah. heart out there. Yeah. Gave it his all, left nothing on the table, but ultimately it wasn't good enough. Nesk rolled back the years in a couple of those Ash rounds. How good was it to see him just stormtrooper in his way into sight, as we've seen him done so many times?
You asked a question, uh, Silagonis, about what makes the Brazilians different, and he said energy, but I've got a, a theory on top of just the energy. Mm -hmm. I think they know when to get aggressive. It's not just balls to the wall. You know, we've seen, we've we've seen said some, this, yeah. some teams where it's aggression, it's aggression, it's aggression. We don't see that, you know, with Liquid, they know when they need to pop up. The fact that they string these multi-kills together, and it's because of the timing, they know, right, now is when we need to get aggressive, now is our opportunity, and they don't hesitate, they just do it with conviction. It's something that Liquid never lost either. They had that back in 21, they've had it in 22. Thinking back, you know, two, three, four years ago, we can see this ability to temper that aggression, knowing when to just send Neskin, knowing when they need to really just go yeah. and drop Blue Hatch like Volps is doing right now on the screen. It's timed and it's calculated we often used to sort of chalk it all up to the latin play style you know yeah. bring that flair that but it's calculated and that's what we've seen so far be consistent throughout all of the regions qualifying it's no surprise and it's no secret that four teams have qualified yeah. from that region half of the teams that have gone through an incredibly dominant region, if I do say so myself. I think um, a lot of these teams are going to be looking towards perhaps the Brazilian playstyle to try and get as much intel as possible, figure out how to counter the kind of aggression that they've continued to show us as well. But I really do want to harp on about this whole energy concept because we spoke about it with the previous matchup as well. As soon as a team has that hype, has that energy, it's almost like you see a whole brand new version of them as well. But I think we should revisit 